der har du ret, ret nu og ret meget nu. Hist og... Varun, her har du raske og udgøre ud og ret varun, ret hist og... Hello folks, today we're joined by a very talented builder within the Imperion community, largely known for his Halo and Halo-inspired builds. He's also generated a number of other build themes. In addition to this, he's also a scenario contributor, server admin, and community event organizer for the Anvil server. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Philbert Farmer. Hello there. Hey, how's it going? So what's in the name Philbert Farmer? Can you tell me about that? Uh, it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> um, Philbert is another word for hazelnut. And I live on a hazelnut farm, so Philbert Farmer. Sweet. A little more alliterative than hazelnut farmer. So, What's that life like? It's interesting. Um, it's a bit different from, I think, what a lot of other people in the community do. Uh, changes with the seasons and with the weather and I always joke that I don't know what day it is but I know what the weather's going to do <laughs> so it's an interesting life being a farmer have you been doing that all your life or did you have a regular job before that yeah I grew up on the farm um, I studied something different in college and school um, I have a forestry background for you know my my technical education and I do that as well um, as a forester but my day-to-day -day job is, is always kind of been farmer. How did you get into Imperion? <laughs> well, a um, bit of a long story, but I can give the shortened version. Um, oh, that's fine. At, Indulge me. 2020, at the start of the pandemic, and I'm trying not to get too dark, but at uh, the start of the pandemic, uh, I actually was diagnosed with cancer and went through kind of a rough 
battle with cancer there for a bit. Um, I went about a month not being able to speak, wow. uh, seven months not being able to eat. Um, and after during that month when I couldn't speak, I was kind of bedridden. And I finally got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I couldn't take not being able to do anything. And I was still didn't have my strength back. But I thought, you know, if I can sit up at a computer, at least that feels like I'm doing something. I'm not just laying down. And I sat at the computer. Um, and I looked, and it happened to be the day that Alpha 12 came out for Empyrean. And so it popped up on my thing, and it was on sale. And so I thought I'd give it a try. Um, I haven't really done much computer gaming before Empyrean. I used to just do console gaming stuff. Um, and it just kind of went from there. I For that first month, because that's all I could do, I played this game like eight hours a day. Um, because I just didn't have the energy or strength to do anything else. Um, and it just kind of stuck Wow. Yeah, um, so <laughs> kind of a dark origin a little bit, but, you know, yeah. I mean, it blossomed into kind of a fun hobby. So uh, can we say you beat cancer? Or is that still... Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm in the five-year. They, they, like, follow up with you regularly afterwards. Yeah. But so far, so good. No sign of anything. So doing pretty good. That's great to hear, man. Yeah. Um. So that was what, Alpha? So you weren't an early backer then? No, no. Uh, right. I actually had seen it. So I bought my first gaming computer in 2019. Um, and I had seen Empyrean on the thing and looked at it. And I thought, man, that I like the concept there. But if I'm completely honest, I thought, man, that looks a little janky. <laughs> <laughs> and so I didn't do it at the time. I didn't get into it. And then, yeah, when I it just happened to be that it was on sale, and I thought, well, you know, for that cheap of a price, I'll I'll take a throw of the dice on it and see what happens. Yeah. So, yeah, Alpha Twelve was right when they added the Galaxy. So, uh, survival or creative being a bigger draw for you? Which one would you say? Uh, I didn't know at all what I was getting into, and so I jumped right into a survival game in vanilla and just started playing and. Didn't know at all how to do anything. I started watching Excalibur and Spanj and all the different video streamers. And that's how I learned how to play and found out about the Blueprint Factory. And then it just like, you know, opened up from there. Because once I realized I could make something in creative and then use it in survival, game changer. Like totally game changer. Yeah. Uh, so what is this your first builder game or is that something you've done? I mean, before? I played a lot of Minecraft. Um, I enjoyed that one quite a bit. It's that's a very different animal, I think, because you don't have angles and it's different shaping wise. I mean, you're building castles and basic kind of stuff, or at least I was. Um, so it's it's a bit of a different kind of game. But yeah, that would be the only other builder game I've ever really done. Um, I've played The Forest, too, I guess. That's another survival game where you can do some building, but it's just nothing on this level. Uh, so we have Halo as a big inspiration for you, obviously. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, what other sci-fi themes have influenced you? I, I would actually say the biggest one that's influenced me is Star Wars. Yeah. Um, I grew up with Star Wars, huge Star Wars nerd. Um, the Halo stuff has mostly been replica builds because um, I love the ships in Halo. Um, but Star Wars, I think, as far as influencing what type of style I like. And then the other one would be The Expanse. Um, I really love the sort of gritty realism of the shipbuilding and stuff in Expanse. And so, like the ship you're looking at there, it has like the, you know, all the detailed frameworks and things like that's kind of an expansive type of a you can see the functional bits even though in the game it doesn't actually do anything but i just love on a build seeing the function of it or the implied function of it yeah it's telling a story it's like you know, some sort of gas tanks or right you know, something to that effect but yeah, like that's, I mean, Star Wars, Expanse, Firefly, the kind of sci fi where it's got the grit and grime and it's more real and lived in. I, I just, I love that. Yeah. And the, the Expanse is really correlates well with Imperion with its uh, multi thrust directions. So it kind of, it makes sense. Um, Absolutely. So, uh, Eve Online, is that, can you say I've that's never 
played EVE Online? And, you know, people have looked at this ship and they've said, oh, that's such and such a ship. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually never seen it. Um, the they, somebody sent me a picture after and they, they're, I was like, oh my gosh, that's basically what that is. Yeah. Um, the, the that was not the intention. Um, it was just a happy accident. Just rant? You just randomly? St Dude, this is the Drake <laughs> if I've ever seen it. <laughs> so there's a ship in the game's files that has a hangar like that that's a pass-through hangar that yeah. i always wanted to make a ship like that because that's such a cool idea with weight saving and everything and so it was that married to there's another ship that you've got out here that um i built before i built this um i'm trying to think what i called it the katari jaeger is the yeah. name of the ship um and if you look at the back of the katari jaeger it's got that kind of bump out paneling with the little down slope winglet. And that was the design element that I applied to this ship. So kind of marrying the two and then the idea of making a earlier game core four carrier. Yeah, that one. So if you look at the back a little bit on the side, you can see those little winglet things that sit down with the bump out so i was trying to kind of copy that style element and bring it over into that other build um because this one is actually a recreation of um i don't remember the guy's name but there's a concept art drawing that i found on pinterest and i loved it and this one i i got it pretty close to the actual uh drawing the guy did and i credit him in my workshop post so if you're curious you can go look on there and find that but um yeah, I was really happy with that. I just love the unique look of that ship. I, so I was like, I have to make this. And it was just so, in the way he drew it, just angular enough that I could do it with Empyrean block work, which is always a struggle. You know, you'll see something cool and it'll have too shallow of an angle or too much round component, you know, aspect to it that you just won't be able to recreate it or do it justice in Empyrean. But this was one of those rare examples where it just perfectly fit with the blocks. Yeah. I was really, really, really happy with this one. One of the few builds I've never actually used in a survival game. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Normally I use every build I make, but there's a couple, a few rare exceptions that I've never used in a survival game. And this is one of them. Oh, that's, that seems like it would be a good starter. Yeah. It's, it was, the idea was to have a starter that you could grow into i think a core three or four and add fixed weapons to it it has a bunch of antennas that you can swap out for fixed weapons so you can use it as kind of an early combat cv yeah so that's sci-fi themes uh now we talked a little bit before um so who if anybody within the imperion build community has influenced you so i don't feel i'm anywhere close to him and his, his ability to do detail work but salustacor was a huge influence in how I make my ships. Um, my first ship that ever really took off on the workshop, I actually was basically borrowing his cockpit front that he made from the Corvus Corvette, which is one of the pirate Corvettes in the game. Um, one of my all-time favorite ships is the Corvus Corvette. I think that's such a cool build that he did. Um, and I was trying to kind of emulate his stylings, especially with this with this pirate ship you're looking at, the uh, Valrune. Um, and actually, Solicitor had a hand in this one. Um, I sent the original player model to him that I had modified my own a little bit, adding battle damage and stuff, and asked him for an opinion on it. Like, hey, what should I do? I want to make a pirate OPV. And he sent me back what you're looking at, which is we changed the color to kind of that blue color, which I love. And then he added the little drone at the back and a little bit of battle damage -y work. He kind of tweaked it a little bit. So I made the original ship, and then this is with his, you know, brush of polish on top of it. And I just, I love the result. It was, I think it's a really cool pirate ship. It is. I, I, I had no idea this was you, but it's uh, definitely one of the, the more charming ones. But I definitely like the pirate ships within the Imperion universe. And it, it really it came about because I was doing a playthrough, and I thought, you know, I just kept seeing those Corvettes, and I thought, man, why don't the pirates have any tougher ships? Uh, man, they really need one, and so I just kind of took it upon myself to make one. Yeah. Uh, so, salutes to core. Uh, anybody else? I mean, pretty much everyone who's who's got a big build. I mean, Excalibur and Girandel 
obviously big influences. Um, when I started doing Star Wars stuff, actually your stuff has been a big influence. One of my favorite builds, and I know it's not that old, but one of my favorite all-time Imperium builds is your Nebul Nebulon B frigate. That is <laughs> such a perfect build. I love it so much. <laughs> Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm not just saying that. Like, that's legitimately one of my favorite builds of all time. I love that thing. Yeah. I've wanted to make one in Imperium for a long time, and now I don't have to because you've already done a, such an amazing job. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's one of those hit or miss things. You know, people love it or hate it just due to the aesthetic of it. Right. Well, and it's it's a re rebel ship, and I much prefer the rebel stuff because I like the grit of it. You know, the real... I, I was thinking about this when I made my, um, and it's not up here, but I made a build for the Star Wars challenge. And I was thinking about how do you, what makes a Star Wars ship? And a lot of it to me, so you have the overall symmetry of the ship. But then when you look at a Star Wars ship, a good one, they always have asymmetric detailing. Yeah. So the, like the piping that's only on one side or like the weird cutout in one spot. Like that's the kind of stuff that really makes a Star Wars build in my, my view. And that's what I love about the Nebulon, because it looks like, you know, you look at the Imperial version of it, and it's got all the armor plates on and stuff, and it's, yeah, it's kind of a boring ship. But you tear that off, and you see all of the, like, bits and pieces and wiring and all that, and it just makes it come, come alive, and it just looks like so much more of a realistic kind of a ship. Yeah. Uh, okay, so in regards to building, uh, you're very prolific here. Um... And this is just a sample of what you've got. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't post that much to the workshop anymore. I still yeah. try to share it in the Discord, but I have a lot. I've just, like we were saying, I've I've looked through my workshop, and I have a lot of stuff in my library that I just forgot that I made that I haven't shared anywhere. <laughs> so for you, what part of the build process is uh, most time-consuming? Texturing. Yeah. And I don't, I, maybe it doesn't actually take as long as I think it does, it, but it feels like it takes forever. <laughs> um, it's definitely my least favorite part, but it's also, I think, the most essential because it takes, you know, a good build and makes it a great build if you do a good job on the texturing. Absolutely. Um, and as I'm looking at these ones as you're going through them, I'm noticing that in my own work. I'm seeing, like, ones where I didn't do as good a job texturing and they just they don't have that special something that some of the other ones do. And it's, it makes or breaks a build. Same with the LCD work. You know, that's one of my Achilles heels as builder is the LCD work. I just don't do enough of it because it's so tedious. Yeah. But it can really make or break a build. Well, so Lose the Core does have that, does have that pack, that set of LCDs. Yes. Of and I have used those on more than one occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so if that's the most time-consuming thing, what do you find is easiest for you? Probably the block work. Um, it's the most, it's the fastest, and it's also to me the most enjoyable. Um, I I love just shaping with blocks and building out a, a ship. And I mean, I it can take me sometimes half the time I spend on texturing and detailing that I do actually just making the, the ship by itself. Um, and the exterior seems to come pretty quick. The interiors take longer, although I do really enjoy doing the interior work on these things as well. That's always kind of fun. Picking and choosing where you're going to put, you know, all the different stuff on the inside. You know, where's the captain going to be? Where's the living quarters and all that different stuff? It's totally not essential, but that's one of my favorite things about this game is that you can have those kind of details and they don't present such a hindrance that they're making it less effective. Like it can, you can still have an effective build that looks really cool. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that. It's some people think it's either form or function, but I think you could get a good blend. And in some cases, I think you're not even sacrificing a uh, form to achieve function. Man, yeah, this one is definitely made before they changed the lighting model. <laughs> right. That's so. That's one of the big things that's really aggravating me is I have to go back and uh, change all that because uh, the interiors are definitely darker. That's uh, so for example, on Adjudicator, that's a, a big issue. Um, yeah, I need to pull an Excalibur and just put Legacy in front of the names of all the old ones, <laughs> so I don't have to mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, which of these builds is your least favorite? So you, it's over on the ground. It was my first capital vessel I ever made. Yeah, this and 
all yeah, the that master key. <laughs> all I can see is it's just such a mess. Like that was my first big thing I ever made, and oh my goodness, it's such a mess. <laughs> It's so rough. I got on even like that was from my first playthrough of Empyrean. That was one of the earliest things I put on the workshop and oof. It's it's rough. <laughs> if you if you look at the cockpit, so I, I was doing this a lot. I I used to take a lot from other builders when they started, like I loved this aspect of this thing and so I try to apply my own version of it. The L E V horizon um, which is now the Privateer Corvette OPV it has a cockpit that's kind of like that. Yeah, I see. That. And I, I loved that ship, and so that was sort of my homage to that ship. Was trying to kind of use that in a different way. Um, and same thing, like I said, with the Kestrel Corsair, which was one of my big first big wor workshop builds. Um, that uses the Cor the uh, Corvus Corvette's kind of bridge and cockpit look. Um, <laughs> before I started kind of developing more of my own style. Yeah, I used to borrow borrow a fair bit, and that's how I learned to do the block work on a lot of this stuff. I'd take the uh, the in game patrol vessels and turn them into player vessels and modify them. Before I knew that they were actually made by players, um, I just assumed. I know it was crazy. I assumed that uh, because they were in the game, they were made by the developer. But that was kind of a cool surprise when I learned, like, oh no, like the actual players playing the game made a lot of this stuff, which is really neat to me. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man, <laughs> you, you're torturing me right now. Can <laughs> we go through my worst build? Uh, yeah, see, I didn't even know. I didn't even know grow light to grow plot ratios at the time. I didn't did not know what I was doing. Wow, I got a thruster right right on the other side of that wall. It cooks you. Oh man. Oh no, I guess it's that's got actually, a block. Yeah, that's it's got a block. It's okay, out of range. See? Okay, yeah, yeah. slightly less aggravating. I knew a little. <laughs> Very little. Five, five grow lights here for what is that? Twelve. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That's a good ratio. Maybe they maybe they grow faster. <laughs> there you go. That's that's got to be it. That would be something. And totally impractical. You know, sometimes I do stuff that isn't always practical, like the overhead hangar door thing, just because I think it looks cool. Like I just thought that was neat, and so I wanted one. It does. Um, it's not practical at all, but yeah, it was it was cool. Yeah, it is cool. It's you know, it's a good breakup. Usually, it's you know, on the back or on the side sometimes. Right. So to have that top down, that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> not great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So we do have a second one. That's fine. Man, I didn't walk through here. Didn't even really notice it. Yeah, that's cool. So you'd have your SV here and then the uh, HV parking in the back. That'll work. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did use it. You know, I, this is one of the ones I used. I got to the point where I needed my big, you know, this was my original vanilla in-game whatever, um, so much as it is. Um, and it worked. You know, it did the job. It just wasn't pretty. <laughs> Interesting uh, dressing around the thrust. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, man. It's kind of got like a, uh, maybe like a gothic vampire vibe to it or something. It kind of does. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of rounded blocks. And it's funny because as I've become more of a builder, I use rounded pieces less and less. Like it's an occasional detail piece or oddball thing. And here I was leaning on them hard and it does not look good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Look at the. Yeah, the idea, I mean, I don't even know if I had the right weapon counts on the, the fixed missile launchers at the front. I may have had too many, I don't even know. But the idea was that you'd have just a bunch of missile launchers in one spot that would just punch a hole in something. That was the whole, you know, as much of a concept as that can be. Yeah. But it was interesting. It 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 worked at the time. I don't know. That's about all I can say about it. <laughs> Artillery 13, so for vanilla. Yeah, so is that over one? the block limit, yeah. I think. <laughs> but first playthrough, because and again, you know, when you I went at that time, CPU and uh, mass volume and block limit and all that stuff was off by default. So I didn't even know that at the time when I made it. So yeah, it's it's a rough build, but. It shows where I've come from. 
So this is your first. This is your first. Yeah, CD. that was my first real build, first CD build. I made a little SV before this, but that was, yeah. you know, pretty minimal. This actually, I don't even know if I ever shared that. This is actually great for a first build. It's 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 not great, but I'll I'll, I'll let you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't agree with you, but I'll let you say it. Well, I mean, you know, for for a first CV or I guess first for any build, um, people have a lot of issue. Um, getting out of the box shape so clearly you've broken from that yeah so for a first take i'd say it's good yeah well thank you all right so i'll do you a favor here let's see here this is uh 2940 there we go <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> it looks so much better now yep so we get to take a look at some of the smaller builds so so that would be your least favorite so let's go over what your favorite is so, I mean, it's hard to pick one because I like a lot of these builds, but I have, if I can narrow it to two, if I'm allowed two. Yeah. Um, so the Sidewinder, which is the vertical build right there by your crosshair, that's more recent. I was just so happy with how that turned out for what it was for that. Just It was for the Core 2 Combat CV Designers Challenge. And it flies well. It looks cool. It's totally a random build. But I just, I love the way it came together. You land it on its side, so the interior stuff is all laid out 90 degrees to the oh, way you fly it. Wow. So you land on the turret, and then the interior stuff is all aligned that way. I actually used, I have a version of this that I made that I fit a warp drive in, and I used it last season on Anvil. And it was fun. It was cool, really cool to get actual practical use out of it. Um, but having to do this every time to land proved to be really tedious. <laughs> so I don't think I'll be using it again. But yeah, so you can see now that you're landed, all of the interior stuff is oriented correctly. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's kind of a unique build. It's got some upgrade room there for shield capacitors and stuff. But, yeah. Um, yeah, kind of a unique build. And then you, there's an entrance exit on the ceiling for when you're in space and then on the ground for when you're parked on the ground. Oh, that's sweet, man. Yeah. I ha I'd seen it before. I didn't realize that that sort of uh, component was in play with the, the dual function with the alignment. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was an interesting design challenge, but I had a lot of fun making it, too. It, was, it really came together better than I could have expected. And this is another one where I was looking at different builds, and I saw somebody had made kind of a Lego thing that looked kind of like this. And I thought, man, I wonder if I can do anything close to that in Empyrean. And mm -hmm. it just, like I said, it just happened to all fit at this scale for the challenge. Yeah. So this would probably be one of my favorites just for the look of it. Um, I like it. And then I have another one that's favorite. And again... The other one is the uh, Marathon Gunship. Yeah, I like... I don't... So the issue I, with vertical builds is just trying to transition through them, the elevators and stuff like that. But this is at a good point where it's not its not too much, right? It's, it's small enough. The other issue with vertical, which I am so frustrated by, because I love a vertical ship, is the camera. When you go to set your third-person camera, often it puts it way above you when you build vertical. And so you have to page down for yeah. like a minute and a half to get it to where you can see the ship. And it's just kind of frustrating. But this one was, again, small enough that it worked. Because I have tried making bigger vertical ships and had to abandon them because of that. It yeah. just doesn't work always. Very robust for a core, core too. It's pretty cool. Artillery and laser. Yeah, and lots of, I don't normally min-max, but I had to do a lot of it with this design challenge to get the right loadout and right thruster setups and everything to kind of maximize what I could do at Core 2. And it works pretty well. It'll take out frigates and corvettes and stuff. Yeah. So, not bad for a little guy. And so then the other one is? It's the the Marathon Gunship, which I think is behind you. Uh, no, uh, to the right, I think it's on the edge. Yeah, over there, that one. 
that one, yeah. That has been my go-to for fighting the, uh, not the Legacy, the drones in RE for like four seasons. Um, it was modeled after one of the Mandalorian ships um, in Star Wars. I forget what the, it's a frigate or a corvette or something. Um, obviously, the one from Star Wars is a lot bigger for you know to the people, but for me, I, I just I like took the shape and the styling of it and scaled it down to a, a little one person kind of bounty hunter type ship. Yeah, um, that was the sort of the design styling I was going for was would be something that I could see like a bounty hunter using. And I have a couple like that where I've tried to make kind of a bounty hunters looking ship because that's one of the cool things about Star Wars is you see lots of guys that have their own little unique ship that's you know to their personality or whatever like Boba, Boba Fett has his own ship and then that like if you look if you ever do a search for bounty hunters in Star Wars you'll see just the widest variety of ship designs and styles which is really cool yeah yeah I dig it definitely some cool clean lines yeah, and see. it's it's been modified I have probably four different versions of this. Each season I use it, I modify it to fit whatever my current preferred strategy is. So the one I used this season actually had a bunch of EMP cruise missile turrets on it um, and just fixed artillery and no other fixed weapons. And it worked really, really well. Um, taking out nullifiers and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, see, I, I, like, I wanted to kind of lived in almost chaotic interior where there's just a lot going on in a small space but you can look through certain areas and you can see what's beyond it like you can see the generators off to the sides and you can see the, the warp drive kind of wrapped in that bit in the middle and there's some piping and it's a bit asymmetric and it, it looks a little chaotic and overwhelming when you look at it but you can see all the different bits that you can kind of guess oh yeah that's what does this and making the ship work even though it's all just there for looks right it's it's got a a real ship feel to it, you know. Some of the, I guess that's one of the things I appreciate is like the different touch of builders. Some are you know more of like a vaulted ceiling, cathedral type, big interiors, and some kind of like to go with some of the cramped in, insides. Maybe feel like a submarine more. And it's, right. So, yeah, I kind of get that feel here. This is like more of a, a real. And I. I think I, I'm probably one who tends more toward the submarine because <laughs> I like I like filling it with stuff. I like there to be lots of stuff, little yeah. bits and stuff. Like back there, you know, you texture that, and I don't know why that block is not textured over there that you just saw, but we'll ignore that. Um, <laughs> but like the interiors of certain things, you're never going to be able to see it when you're playing the game. Like the top of this, you're never going to see that. Yeah. But I just can't help but put all the little detail of stuff anywhere I can see it. Um. And I like ladders. I won't apologize. I know a lot of people get frustrated with ladders, but I love them. <laughs> One of the few. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm crazy. Or like that, where it's a window, but I've removed one of the window panes and replaced it with a shutter or whatever they call those things just to make it look. And then like on the corner, it's actually a truss block in that corner piece. Just kind of hodgepodge looking like it's been lived in and beat up and put back together. <laughs> Oh, I do that a lot too. I like the hanging bunk bed because if you do it in gray, the the bottom piece almost looks like a part of the mattress. You know, it kind of you can trick yourself into thinking that you know it, it actually works. Yeah, that, that, that actually does work. I'd say that, that, I, I that use, feels submariney to me, and so it kind of goes with the cramped aesthetic. Yeah. I use these bunk beds so so seldomly. I didn't even realize you could texture them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can apply color to them. And again, you know, I'm the opposite. So, like, there's the fancier bed. I've only recently started using those with some of my cleaner, like, Halo-type builds. Um, but it used to be I would use that one because that, to me, a pirate doesn't sleep in a fancy, nice bed. They either sleep in the crappy bunk bed or you have a pirate that's got, like, that nice bed because they actually live on the ship. Yeah. It's their home. It's not just their place of business. But yeah, this is one of my favorites because, like I said, I just can't help but use it every season. I just it works really well for what I need it to, and I love the look of it. Um, 
Yeah. And then each time I use it, I go through and I recolor it and retexture it and re modify the weapons. And I mean, I do that a lot with my stuff. I'll build the original and then I will have in my own blueprint file, I'll have three or four different versions that have been retextured, recolored, modified in some way. Um, because as much as I love building new stuff, I also really enjoy recreating existing things, just giving it new life. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So in regards to Imperion overall, are there any particular features or changes, uh, something you'd like to see added to the game? Um, if you restrict it to features added, <laughs> And not what I'd like to see changed. Um, <laughs> uh, more block shapes, probably. Yeah. Um, we had a block shape update not too long ago, and it really opened up some different stylings. Um, but one thing I would love to see, because I've grown so attached in recent months to the structural ramp blocks in my builds, and they can't currently be textured or colored with a custom palette, um, I would love to see that same angle set applied to individual blocks from the developer. Yeah. Um, I think that would be really, really nice to see. And there are some people working on that that have made those blocks and have shown them to Elian. And so I'm crossing both my fingers. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they come. But yeah, block shapes would definitely be my number one most wanted. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh... A nice 11 and a quarter degrees, that would be great because then. Absolutely. Shallower angles yeah. would make so many more things that you could just bring to life. Right. That's that's what, you know, I've, so I've mentioned it before on uh, Imperion's forum that, particularly that, like the 11 and a quarter, that would open up so much. Like, it, and if we had like the accompanying, uh, uh, family of blocks with it, the transitions and stuff like that. It, give us that, and then you're talking about, you know, rather than making stuff in a likeness of particular ships, would be able to make replicas more often. Yep, hundred percent, hundred percent. And I, I think that would be um, kind of like its own advertising point. Is you know, people making these ships, they look so great, and you know, we're putting it out in media, people would see that and like, oh, what's this game, right? And I, that's with the Valhalla, I actually did that. I took some pictures of it and I posted it on the uh, Halo Reddit instead of the Empyrean Reddit. And just like, hey, I made this and it's from Halo. And I had a bunch of people ask me, hey, what game was that? And so I'm sure that there was some interest that could have been generated from that. Absolutely. I did that with the uh, Kalos Deathwing and went to a couple of uh, Star Wars forums, posted it. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, that was a big project there, the uh, the Valhalla, that, or the Valhalla. That was a good month to yeah. make that working off and on. Would you one say, of my bigger builds? Very. It's let's see, what is the length on this thing? Two eighty-two. Okay. <laughs> I love when you look at the stats page and it says 1% because it takes so many cores to run the thing. Uh, so would you say there was one particular build that gained you traction on the workshop? or? Yes. That... Um, it's not on here, but you, well, it's sister ship is the uh, Scar Kestrel down there. So that is a recreation of one of my first builds that took off on the workshop. And it's still my most popular build on the workshop, even though it's a really old vanilla build, but the uh, Kestrel Corsair was the first build. I happened to post it the day that Elyon went to version 1.0 and had their big release and got featured a bunch of places. And the timing lined up and it just happened to be on the workshop at that moment and it became a trending build and took off and far and away my most popular build in the workshop is the Kestrel Corsair. Very which nice. looks kind of like this, but is instead of being Scar, it's just regular Pirate, and it was made for vanilla instead of RE, so different thruster setups and stuff. But, yeah. But yeah, this was one of my things where I started kind of challenging myself to do styles that were outside of what I knew. So this was my attempt at a Scar build, kind of copying Jay Randall's 
and as as all scar builds should have you got to have a pink constructor clearly so <laughs> goes very well with, with scar <laughs> um <laughs> and I had a lot of fun doing this one. I love the scar look that he came up with. I think that's such a cool thing, and um, I think it actually makes the build easier. Um, having done a few um, builds now in other people's uh, faction styling, um, because it's an established look, and so you're really just trying to apply it to your own shaping. And so I think it makes it go a little quicker, actually, for me when I'm doing that. Um, because now, so I've done a, I did a scar build, I've done some pirate builds, I did a trade guild ship, and then I, I worked on some of the legacy stuff. So I've done a few of those where you're using somebody else's established style, and it's kind of a fun exercise as a builder to do that. Get out of your comfort zone a little bit. And yeah. Try something different. The legacy was definitely one of those. That's such an unusual um, way to build having to incorporate the Xeno blocks in there and stuff that normally everyone tries to avoid, like the plague. <laughs> and then you're trying to feature them in those builds, which is interesting. Yeah, this is a very good capture of the Scar Essence. Thank you. I was trying. I, like I said, I'm, I'm was always so blown away with the Scar builds. There's one by um, Darth Zapod, who's not in the community anymore or not active anymore, but it's amazing the scar i believe it's a ravager and it's this massive scar like super ship in game thing and i i would sometimes spawn that in when i was building this and just look through it for all of his different detail shapings and stuff and um get inspiration from it because it's it's very well done it's also a really good example of the the scar aesthetic Good colors, the grays and uh, red mixture. Um, yeah, it's it it gives you a really good overall kind of a feel for that grit. Yeah, that I think he was going for, which I love. Like I said, that's one of my favorite types of sci-fi is the kind of the gritty, real, lived-in sci-fi. The Halo thing is almost more of a nostalgia. Like, I haven't played a Halo game since, I think, like, Halo ODST. I haven't played any of the newer ones. Because, you know, I started as being, you know, a console gamer. So Halo was, was a big deal. And, uh, but I haven't played any of the new ones. It's just that I love, I've always loved the ships and stuff from it. And when I made the Valhalla, which is a Paris frigate, which is kind of like the most, everyone kind of recognizes that as a Halo ship. Yeah, I started looking for other Halo ships I could do, and I I realized the Paris is actually one of the smaller Halo ships. So by <laughs> making it so huge, I kind of shot myself in the foot for being able to make anything else scaled to it. <laughs> um, but I was able to find uh, that they have these things called um, what are they called? Uh, prowlers, which are like their special operations, you know, stealth ships. And that's what that one that looks like a manta ray behind you is. It's it's based off of a um, UNSC prowler, the biggest one, the biggest prowler that they have, um, yeah. a Sahara class. But that was what I was going for anyway. And I was pretty happy with how that one turned out too. It's kind of a cool ship. Kind of like a uh, AWACS dome on the top of that thing. Yeah, that's kind of the the look that I. That's what I took from it anyway, from looking at the pictures. That's kind of what I thought it looked like. So uh, this is a touch of some of your building stuff. Now, you are very active with the Anvil community, uh, running, I guess, uh, you're an admin there and also a community event organizer. What goes into... Ye oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, sorry. So what goes into uh, generating the events for the server? Is that um, you just kind of theory craft, okay, let's... You know, this is how we're going to get people aggravated and get them killed. Or... <laughs> <laughs> still, still sore about the the glide bombers. I see. <laughs> um, no, so I, I'm not actually an, an event admin. So that's okay. there's different guys that do that. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm more of the con a content admin and then a community admin. And so I think, as far as we see it from the admin side, the missions and things that's still content is less than an event because it's still player driven yeah um and a lot of that comes from 
me trying to come up with what I think would be fun and then having kind of a creative writing little session each weekend where I sit down and I try to write out the briefs for everything for the AMIC and the ASF and the engineers and do those little write-ups and try to think of, okay, how can I tie this into something logical that could be happening in the server or with our little civil war thing that we thought up as a team? How can I relate back to that with whatever the mission I want to use for that week is? And then a lot of it too, um, being a farmer, I spend a lot of time on the tractor and you don't do a whole lot of anything but think when you're on the tractor. <laughs> and so I, sometimes it comes to me when I'm just out there doing my work and I'll think of something like, oh, that'd be a cool idea for a mission. And so like that's where the glide bomber thing came in where I knew I had had a lot of fun playing with bombers. And that's kind of an unusual thing that a lot of people don't do. They don't never really try the bombs because there's other better ways to do stuff. And so I thought, man, I'd love to make a bomber mission. And then I also needed to tie it to a design thing. And so rather than having people use bombers that already existed, I thought, well, let's try doing the glide thing. Another admin had been pushing for an event based around um, atmospheric flight uh, ships. So like single direction thrust ships, like like those glide bombers um, for dogfighting or something else. I forget what we were discussing, but I thought, man, that'd be kind of cool for a dive bomber. And unfortunately, it didn't turn out as fun for everyone. Um, but, uh, part of, part of that is what we discovered is that sometimes when you get in those ships and you're on a multiplayer server, the lift mechanics of the game don't actually work. So there's a bug that causes the wings and stuff to not generate the lift they're supposed to, so they don't fly right. So that was a big factor as well, unfortunately. Okay. Um, that, well, that might make sense. Okay. Yeah. Because when I, I do test this stuff in single player, um, and sometimes in multiplayer, but I didn't have a chance, so I just did a single player test, and it was fun, and it worked well in single player. Yeah. Um, so I think it was a bug that caused us problems there. But yeah, no, it's 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 kind of an excuse. So before I played Empyrean, one of my hobbies that I used to spend a lot of time on was creative writing. Um, I've written a few books. I haven't like tried to publish them or anything, but just oh, for wow. fun, I've 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 written this a, work working on a series of of sci-fi novels and so i really enjoy the kind of creative writing process as, as just like a hobbyist kind of a thing and um i get to do i guess I'm, I'm sort of tying that and i get to use that when i write these briefs and i come up with that sort of stuff um so it's just like a fun little side activity for me yeah. and trying to think up things that like i said that tie into what we're doing on the server and that what works with whatever the narrative, you know, focus of the season is. Like the last two seasons have been civil war between the two factions. Um, but as far as like coming up with the stuff, we work as a team. So there's several of us that are content admins and we'll meet in voice periodically, you know, once every couple of months and we'll talk and plan out what we want to do for the next season and who's going to work on what and try to lay it all out so that we have kind of a rough idea of what we're heading towards and what we need as far as you know we need this many opvs and this many pois and all that kind of stuff um so that we can get it all done in time to be able to be ready for the next season but as far as the, the weekend week out missions i just kind of make those up on the fly if i'm honest oh wow okay hmm. yeah i'll sit down and i'll i'll put together all those thoughts i've had during the week about what would be fun and what would we do and then just kind of put it to paper, sit down and, and do the little creative writing on it. So speaking of the two factions, uh, the one in particular, Blade Collective, uh, what part did you play in making that faction? So again, I don't I don't like to take credit for anything when it's the server, because that's all, all of it. Everything, no matter what it is, it is all a team effort. We all have different, you know, parts that we play in it and helping and multiple hands touch everything that goes on the server um so i did a lot of the opv conversions um my thought was when we decided we wanted to have a hostile faction and also when we added the anvil faction um wanting to feature designers from our community and feature their work um so trying to pick designers who had builds that would fit kind of a unified style so it looked somewhat like an organized faction and then picking builds that we also from designers we wanted to feature. So they're like Procyon and Daedric and Inti 
and you now, all of you guys have builds in the Blade Collective faction because you're all community people and we wanted to feature your amazing work. And as far as that, it, I did a lot of the conversions. So taking a build that exists, applying a new color palette to it, and then making sure you go through the whole thing and making sure you get all those colors to look good. Because a lot of ships, you know, with custom palettes, um, it can be a bit of a job to re recolor and retexture a thing to make it look like it belongs in the Blade faction with the right, you know, primary colors and secondary colors and accent colors and glowies and stuff. Um, so I did a lot of that. And then also the conversion to make it an OPV. So you're converting all of the container controllers and cargo extensions, you're converting those into armor blocks because an OPV doesn't need cargo. Um, you're adding turrets and balancing turret layouts. You're moving the core often so that it's not where people know it's going to be. Um, trying to add drone spawners, internal spawners, on the off chance that somebody disables a ship and boards it and clears it that way. Um, so it's just all of the, the kind of ticky tacky stuff that goes into doing one of those little OPV conversions. Um, and I had only had minimal experience doing that with like the Valrune and making the Trade Guild Dread and some of the other things that I've worked on, working on the legacy ships that I helped with. Um, so that gave me some of the, the background information I needed about how OPVs worked to be able to, to convert them. Um, but yeah, that's mostly my contribution is converting stuff. Um, the closest I've come to building something from scratch would be the Blade drone base. I took uh, a base that Procyon had made and basically copied the exterior of it and pasted it onto fresh blocks and then built all of the subterranean portion from scratch. So it's like a, the internal part is a totally new POI, but it features his cool base on top. So you get that cool look, but it's a, a new experience when you enter it from what you're expecting. Um, but yeah, mostly it's just adding the spawners, designing the layouts, um, adding walls to certain areas so that you can path people through a base or an OPV that was designed to be easily navigated by a player. And now you want to kind of funnel people a certain way so that, you know, it can be played like it's a dungeon. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it was an interesting change of pace and it's, it goes along with how my experience in Empyrean has been. I mean, I started building stuff for myself to use in my own gameplay and then for a time was making stuff more for the workshop for other people and then went back to building more for myself started making opvs um and a lot of that came from my own gameplay as well you know i built the pirate uh frigate because i thought why don't the pirates have better ships than corvettes you know so they should have a tougher ship to fight um the trade guild dread i made because my faction one season decided we wanted to be pirates we wanted to fight the good guys so we were taking out polaris and trade guild stuff and i did a single player test to see how feasible that was and realized that there was no dreadnought for either of those factions at the time and so i took it upon myself to make one and so i made this dreadnought for the uh the trade guild in their kind of styling um because they at the time I think they only had one OPV, and then right before we started that season, they had an update and they added two more, which was kind of cool. Yeah. And then later I went back because I this one I named it the Titan class Dreadnought, because Titan like Titan of Industry, kind of going with Trade Guild, I guess. Um, I noticed that their other OPVs that they added didn't have names, um, and so Darkest and I went through and. We, I did an update of the actual internals to add plants to the grow plots and spawners and make them look more alive. And then we renamed them at the same time as well. So mogul class and currency class and bounty class and stuff. So it makes sense. Currency class it definitely ties in. Yeah. And so again, you know, adding stuff because I see a need for it. Like that's kind of where my head's at when I'm doing this is this stuff. It's it, it is honestly it's a bit selfish. I wanted something to fight, so I made something to fight. <laughs> Uh, and then from there, evolving into the community, getting more involved as an admin and doing more of the like server specific stuff. And then ultimately this last season culminating in making new planets. That was a totally new experience for me. Wow, that cool. took a lot of work. Wow. Uh, where do you see the, uh, uh, so 
in the uh, hierarchy of progression, where do you where do you envision the Blade Collective? Would you say it's before Drone Space or kind of on par with it? Or well, the original intention behind the Blade Collective was to have something that would be kind of on par because the Hamster Core is pretty much a direct copy of the Ox Core, just with a different method and recipe to get it. And the original idea was that not every player on our server is a combat heavy player. A lot of them don't like CV combat. A lot of them like to run POIs. Some of them don't like to fight stuff at all. And so the original method of getting hamsters was as a random chance through uh, very and ultra rare uh, loot crates. So you could get them even from doing lesser POIs and eventually build a hamster core, even if you weren't you know, engaged in really challenging in-game content. Um, it evolved because we had some feedback from people that said that they were really hard to get because it was all random chance. Um, and so it evolved into us creating our own patrol vessels and bases and POIs and stuff so that people had a non-random way to get them. Um, and they, again, yeah, the philosophy was kind of to put them on par with the drone faction. And that's still evolving. We're still making changes and alterations as we get feedback. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the idea was that because the hamster core is is the same as an ox core that we wanted the difficulty level to kind of be on par. There are some weaker OPVs that you can take that are easier than drone ships, but there are also some weak drone faction ships like harvesters and dismantlers that you can take out pretty easily. Yeah. Um, so it's a similar kind of balance, or at least that's what we're striving for. The big difference, I think, is that the Blade Collective has dreadnoughts where the a drone faction doesn't really. I mean, they have guardians and they have nurseries, but they don't really have an official dreadnought. Yeah. And thanks to you, we have one in oh. for the Blade Collective. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I like it. I like where they are right now. I think they're at a very good balance. I've, so, yeah, this I would say this is my first season doing a, a playthrough really touching... Uh, hitting hard on the Blade Collective stuff, and I'm really enjoying it. I feel that it's a good mix of challenge and reward. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, it is it is harder than you would think when you go into it as a player and you start, like, realizing the work that goes into actually balancing these things, because people are always finding loopholes and broken bits and oh shoot you know if we shoot right here there's only one block to the core and you're just like dang it i didn't think of that like now that's got to be a foundation block and it's like all these backs and back and forth because it's sort of the the double-edged sword you know we wanted to feature player ships but player ships don't always make good opvs um they inherently have blind spots or lack of proper turret coverage or you know any number of weaknesses that can make them too easy to fight or conversely that can make them unreasonably hard to fight for what they are um, and so that's when you do things like changing the whole material to harder or lighter materials or adding foundation blocks to reinforce you know otherwise weak cores that kind of stuff yeah I would describe that as something like an arms race between the player and the the modder. <laughs> right, and we don't want to get too crazy into that too, because I mean, you don't want this content to be punishing or to be gated to people who are on the extreme end. Um, so we try to resist the urge to make it crazy, crazy hard where we can. Yeah. Um, and again, the other problem too, it's not any one of us that unilaterally makes all the decisions you know it's it's a group effort so different people contribute different things and have different backgrounds of experience in playing the game so the hope is that from all of that to collectively we'll get a good result so tell me about the headache of being a server admin <laughs> <laughs> um well you know it it comes and goes um sometimes it's an issue more so than others um i don't generally answer tickets or that kind of stuff i'm not that kind of admin oh. uh, most of my focus is content um so writing the briefs for the amec amic or amic asf and engineers um helping with that kind of stuff doing the opvs uh making the starter planets for this new season um 
trying to think up new things that we need or could be really fun to have on our server. Um, and then I do help with managing the Discord a bit. Um, and that can be, you know, you get feedback from some people. And sometimes it's, you know, hey, this was great, but could you do this? And sometimes your feedback is you ruined my life. And so <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a balance. Like some of that feedback is helpful and some of it not so much. Yeah. So that's the only time where it really is hard is when you get that feedback where somebody's just like, hi, ah, you, you, you know, you ruined my day and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to. So. I don't know. It's it's fun overall. I like being an admin. I think it's it's cool because I get the opportunity to make cool, unique stuff for the community. And the Anvil community means a lot to me because it was so integral in my recovery from having gone through the cancer stuff um, because I found it really early on. And it was a really big benefit to me in getting back to normal, having this as a place to go and hang out and chat with people and you know share an interest in a hobby yeah so i like giving back to the community and trying to come up with new stuff for everybody to enjoy i like that you're on board with the sv lobby that's uh <laughs> i think we kind of shared similar aspirations with them and the thinking the scope of a small vessel should be increased yeah, and it's it's kind of a neat thing too because those small little changes, they don't seem to upset the apple cart of balance for the game. They just add another lane for people to drive in, to play in. And so anytime we can do that, we can open up a new gameplay style for people. I, I, I'm all for that. Like, that's awesome. If we can do that without disrupting anything that's there and... I think that's exactly what those those SV changes do is they allow you to, to play with a different kind of starter. You can use an SV as more of a long term starter now. Um, the SV clone chamber, same thing. You know, I didn't really see a reason not to do that. Yeah. Um, so it just it adds new gameplay avenues and new new lanes for people to explore, and I think that's cool. Yeah. It it gives the uh, server its own uh, touch of flair, its unique flair. Is it its own flavor? Um, you know, like you talked about some of the, the options to you don't necessarily have to be right out of the gate with a, a CV. You could roll with the SV option. So, yeah, really appreciate that. <sighs> yeah, and so these are you're looking at those ships. Those were my attempts at using the uh, the structural ramps um, and trying to come up with some way to give them some character instead of just being all one big flat color. Yeah. And so part of that is coming up with the, the multicolor design patterning. patterning. Um, and then some of it is the inset cut-ins that you have to do um, because what I discovered in working with those blocks is that you can get the normal blocks to color match, but only in one light setting. Right. So when you're shining light on them, they'll, they'll look like it's the same block, but then they get into the dark and all of a sudden it's two different colors. It's super frustrating. <laughs> so this is sort of my attempts in various places, you know, ending with a straight line to regular blocks or curving the structural ramps back on themselves so that they don't actually, you know, contact anything midway through an angle. And it's just, it's an exercise in frustration, but I like the results. I mean, you just, you can't achieve those sharp angles and shallow angles um, any other way right now in the game. Yeah. And I think it is worth it to, to invest the time and, and the effort into making something with them because it's it is rewarding when you get the end results and you see and especially with the the um stratos the littler one i was really really pleased with how that one came out and this is the original stratos not the um i have an updated one that i made um and again going back to that theme like i said i like to tinker with stuff so after i've made a build i will go through and rip it out rip out the center of it and remake it um, so this is the original. This was designed after the Cumulus Corsair from uh, Season 3 of The Mandalorian. 
Um, yeah, yeah. The, the, the pirate. I mean, obviously the thrusters are a bit different, and you know, I made some design choices, but um, that was the inspiration, at least. And so, like in the show, it has the hangar that's kind of recessed on top. It's just like a big landing area. Um, and I used this in season six, and it worked really well. And it was the first time I've done a playthrough where I spawned in a ship at Core 9 and used that ship all the way through and just upgraded it with adding cores and stuff. Because um, I think I brought this in like day two of the server season, and I, th I kept that same ship all the way through. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a totally different way to play than what I'm used to. Um, but between seasons, I wanted to use it again, but I wanted it to be fresh. So I removed the top side landing pad, gutted the interior, and added a belly entrance hanger like on the big ship next to it. Um, and that's what I used this last season, which has also been a lot of fun. I so I, I, I see it as like I get more life and more legs out of a thing that I made, even though I have to put more work into it to do that. But yeah, I just I enjoy these ships and I don't feel like I use them quite enough. And so that allows me to to get the full use out of them. Really like this receiver area. This has got a good look to it. Very cool Vista. And I I have this ship, the actual one from the show as the backdrop on my computer. And so every time I look at it, I just see more and more like, oh, man, like that ship is very different than the one I made. <laughs> like the scale is totally – it's way smaller than this in the actual like show because that recess bit, there's some people in the – at least in the concept art pick I have on my background, there's some people standing up in there, and their heads are above the sidewall. So it's it's a very different scale. Oh, wow. Yeah. It looks so huge in the show, though, and so – I think that's more what my brain was trying to recreate was the, what I remember from seeing the show. Very nice style. Yeah, I, en I enjoyed this one quite a bit. And this one was cool too. So on a lot of my builds, um, when I first started, it was a bit limiting in this game because they only give you a maximum of like two or three block height landing gear. And when you're starting out building and you think that's your only option, it, it is a bit frustrating and a bit limiting. And then I discovered that if you put blast doors as your landing struts, the hitbox is still there even if the struts retracted. And so you can have ships where only a single point touches the ground and the rest of it can look like it's floating. And so that's why this ship has that nose that touches the ground because that's where the ladder is to board it. Wow. Right on the yeah, yeah, and then you can go up there and come through the ship, and so the rest of the ship is supported by invisible, you know, uh, blast doors that keep it up in the air, so it can land flat. And what's kind of was fun about that is because it is high enough. A lot of times when I'm doing a POI or something, yeah, so you, there you can see them retracted. So even when they're retracted, they still have the hitbox and they'll still sit there and they can land, but. A lot of times on a POI, I can land the nose of that ship right into the center of the POI, and then you hop down the ladder and you're right in the middle of it because <laughs> it's the only point that touches the ground, which is kind of cool. And then this, I needed a ship to graduate to eventually, so this is that's why I built this one. I needed a bigger ship, and I wanted to kind of keep that same look. Um, I've always wanted to do a Star Destroyer type hangar. And so that's where this came from. That's why it has the inconvenient belly entrance hanger. <laughs> cool novelty, though. Know? I like it. Very nice interior. And little Phoenix Squadron LCD there. I do occasionally do LCDs, but they're a bit few and far between. And this one's styled more like it's a bit of a cleaner look. Um. The Stratos was, I, the interior at least, was more of like a uh, piratey kind of look. And this one, I wanted it to be more kind of clean and put together, maybe more like a Imperial ship that the Rebellion took over and repurposed or something. Yeah, I can see that. It kind of makes sense. Oh yeah, nice little, <laughs> little bomb. <laughs> <laughs> this room, so this ship is quite large, and I've I had I 
I don't know, several weeks that I spent working on it last season. In the middle of the season, I stopped to go into creative. And I really wanted to finish it so I could use it. Like, I wanted to get it in there so I could start playing with it. And I had all these rooms at the front. And I was just like, I don't know what to do with them. And so I, that's where the RP random bomb room came from. Like, I just had to do something with the room. And I wanted to finish <laughs> the ship. So that's where that came from. <laughs> random bomb storage. I like it. And it has drop pod base too. That's what that room you were looking at before that doesn't go anywhere. That has the blast doors at the bottom. Um, a few of my ships I've made, I, I I use what I call drop pods. So um, a little SV pod that you can mount to the ceiling. Yeah, right in here. And then as you flip switches and stuff in the ship, the doors will open and then whoever's in the pod can deploy straight down. So like you'll see drop chamber green, drop chamber open, that kind of stuff. Um, so in the room next to it, there's a bunch of seats and things. And that's where you'd sit if you were one of the guys for the drop pods. So you could fly around sitting ready to go. And then there's a little light that comes on when it's when you're good to get up from your seat and go get in the pods. Um, and I did that on a few of the UNSC ships as well. So when that light turns on from the P menu, that's when you know you're good to go. Oh, sweet. Nice RP. Yeah, and I've I've used them once or twice myself. I mean, it's kind of hard to do it when you're alone. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you're just dropping a pod away from your ship and you're stuck on a planet. But it was kind of fun just to test it out. Um, I keep wanting to do an event based around drop pods. I was, I was I just, about to say that it might make for an. Interesting I have event. I'm I'm not an <laughs> event admin. I've had I've dreamed up a couple of different events, but because I'm not an event person and it's hard on the weekends to find time to do this stuff. Um, I have we haven't done one yet, but I would love to do a drop pod kind of event sometime. Beautiful ship, nice lines. Thank you. Yeah, this is the I did a small update to it, and it's my current ship that I used as my in-game ship on the server. And it worked pretty well, fully. Upgraded with shields and all that. Nice. Borrowed, I believe that's a, I don't remember if that's a Solution Core LCD or a J. Randall LCD. But I love their virtual cockpit setups. Jay did one on the trebuchet that's got like the blue dot work matrix on the floor and stuff. I love that. I always thought that was such a cool look. Yeah. So we got the Silent Winter here. Yeah, that's another Halo ship. That's the uh, the Prowler. Right. The little spec op ship. You, you think you said it was, what, the biggest size Prowler? Yeah. Most of the other ones would be probably like SV size in yeah. the period. Big SVs. But I'm more of a CV builder. That's just what I prefer to make. And the hangar had to be just big enough that I could put a pelican in here. <laughs> so it just fits one. This was a ship I actually made because I I had that drop pod mission in mind. And this was going to be the ship I was going to use. Because it has, I gave it six drop pod bays. Um, so it's, it's got the same LCD, same light, and then three chambers on each side. Very cool. That's what the shield upgrade right here. Yep. Yep. Or if you're me, you put your solar panels in there. That's probably my biggest focus when I make a build anymore is, um, well, aside from this build where I didn't even care about it, but um, is power management. That's probably my biggest focus when I'm building is I want, I don't like to power off my capital vessels. It's one of my own little weird quirk pet peeve things. I, I, always hate powering off a capital vessel. It just feels wrong. <laughs> like, they never take the Starship Enterprise into orbit around a planet and then power it off. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense to me. My brain, I can't handle it. So I always try to have a setup on my main ship where I have enough solar or 
aux cores or whatever the, to, that I can park it with the shields on and the turrets on and just not burn any fuel. Yeah. And that's where the the Astra and all that stuff came from too. Was, was power management. That makes sense. It's a valid argument. About this little guy here, the Agro Bulldog. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of what the actual name of the one I based it on is. It's the Star. It was for the Star Citizen Designer Challenge. I remember um, that. Yes, yes, that it was. I've never, I've never played Star Citizen, so I don't know the ships all that well. But I, I saw this one when I was looking through, and it's the Ag Argo something or other. Um, but when I was building it, I showed it to my faction buddies, and they're like, "It looks like a bulldog," and so that's you know where it got the name. But yeah, this was supposed to be a Star Citizen build. Very cool. Yeah, I was pretty pleased with it. Um, I ended up using it last season, I believe. It was my planet hopper for going to get silver from deposit mining early on and doing a lot of that kind of opportunity stuff. I fought a few uh, harvesters, I think, with it just to test it out. Um, it ended up being kind of like a multi-role workhorse. And then the back is actually a dock for an Astro module. So you can stick a module right there to take it with you. Yeah. That's what I think. And like, like we were saying, the this build, if you shut the thrusters off, it can park with the shield up and not burn fuel, yep. which is nice. But yeah, I was pretty pleased with how that one turned out. And then the Kopi, which is the Expanse Designer's Challenge build. Another one of my favorites. I love this one. I was really, really pleased with how it came out. Wanted something. I, I was tempted. So in, in the expanse, you know, the actual interiors are laid out 90 degrees to the thrust direction. Yeah. Um, and I was tempted to do that. But when I started, it was so impractical. Um, and it kept messing with my mind. I'd, I'd exit the ship and I'd be like, wait a minute. I'm not like this isn't I'm not oriented correctly. And so I ended up just doing the interior flat like a standard Empyrean ship. Really good use of deco here. I like the, the story you got going on, this crane arm, and it uh, looks like these push out. I didn't even realize this was solar, because you got it masked yep. over here with the... That was the my grades. my love-hate relationship with solar panels. <laughs> um, I love to use them. I love that they exist in the game, because they can be hidden in so many different ways like that. But there are so few builds where it looks good to show a solar panel. Yeah. And so I'm always trying to find ways to hide them like that. And it works if it's just a docking pad to dock a ship to, then, you know, it's no big deal. Oh. Really good industrial vibes here. Prolific use of the ladder. Course. Yes, I apologize for nothing. <laughs> I love the ladder. Um, it, I and before they changed the elevator stuff, the jetpack elevator thing, I did use the elevator a lot more. Yeah. Um, but I find that if I'm in space and I want to jetpack, I can do it more effectively with elevators or with uh, ladders than I can with elevators. And to me, the elevator doesn't look as good with the expanse like style. I feel like the ladder is more of an expanse type deal. It definitely works with the industrial aesthetic. Looks really good. Uh, the ladder that is very good. Thank you. This was again the, my big exercise in taking what should be a single block hallway and seeing how much size class I could waste in a single block hallway. And so it, it ends up being, I think it's a three by three hallway on that thing, the main corridor inside the ship. But it's it's literally just a hallway. Like there's no other functional reason for it. It's just adding all of the you know the side corridors that go nowhere that show piping and all of the random stuff in the build. But yeah, a little belter, a little belter skiff. Love it.
Bill Jaeger or Jaeger, that's should thing. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I was I was really pleased with on this one, the shaping and stuff. Um because I, I look at a lot of concept ships trying to come up with ideas, thinking like, oh, that's a cool element of that ship. I wonder if I can recreate that and see what happens when I start building. And this is one of those rare times where I was looking at a concept art pick and I never stopped looking at it. And I just couldn't pull myself away from seeing if I could recreate it. And it, it worked. I was I was really surprised that it, all the shaping was doable. And I think actually the the concept art guy had it originally envisioned it as like a fighter. Yeah. So I think I might I scaled it up a bit, but but yeah, those design. I actually made a whole series of ships after I made that one in that same style. The uh, Katoom over there that we already looked at. That's one of them. Um, I made a Core Nine Combat CV that I never released anywhere. I made a couple of starter CVs, um, and I actually. You find, finally found an opportunity to reuse that stuff when I was making the new starter planets. Um, I needed POIs for one of them that kind of would fit the new aesthetic of because the the one planet is dominated by bamboo, and I wanted something that was kind of unique to look. And so I used a lot of those builds that I had made for that series and turned them into bases and stuff and base elements to make little little POIs out of them. Yeah. Ah, the Claymore. Back before I knew that artillery was no good in multiplayer. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's okay. it's it's kind of a face tank a little bit. Yeah. Back to back to like the thruster, the big thruster on the front, but it was good. I mean, even with using the artillery, it was still pretty effective in its day um, in multiplayer. But one of my earlier ships, for sure. It's a beautiful early ship. Very much trying to go more submarine on this thing. With the piping textures and stuff, but yeah, you know, I like that myself with some of the the tighter cramped areas. I feel like, you know, if it's something like a cathedral or vaulted ceilings, it's maybe a, a misuse of space, I guess. Well, it, can, it just depends on the build. I mean, sometimes those really pull off a look, you know, if, you, if that's the style you're going for. I mean, NT has some amazing huge hangers that he's done, and he still fits the details into, like, the ceiling bits and the arches and the support beams, and it just, it all kind of comes together. And if you didn't have the scale with it, I don't think it would be the same effect. Yeah. Atreus. Yeah. Kinda so this was, again... My one of my attempts at making a series of builds. So I had the Agamemnon, I think, is the bigger one, and so I made this one, and I made two or three other ships that all use the same kind of styling throughout. My first real attempt at making like a series of builds. This was like season two on the Anvil. Yeah. So pretty early. I joined part way through season one. That's when I first started playing the multiplayer. This is a little starter, upgradable starter carrier thing. Starter carrier. I like that. I've done a couple like that with the little, you know, runway type setup. I made one other one like that that I think I shared somewhere. It's not on the workshop, though. Yeah. Um, and it's it's cool. I mean, they never fly quite right because they're kind of asymmetric and stuff. And it, but it's it's a fun little build. If you want to do like an SV heavy playthrough or something, SVHV, those are kind of fun starters to use. So Athos, it looks like we got a, a family of carriers here: the Astra, the Athos, and the modules. So. Um, 
the originally when the modular thing started, it was J Randall and script. And so you had the Helios from J Randall and his, I think, design philosophy was to circumvent CPU by using modules. Um, and then you had scripts Majura, which is like the starter, you know, version of it. So you had starter ships um, with smaller module scale so you could get into it earlier. And I always looked at that and I always thought, you know, um, I want to try my hand on it. The Mojura is nice, but it's a little too small, and the Helios for me is a little too big. And so the Astra was my attempt at making one that was kind of in between, um, a kind of a mid mid size. And for me, the modules are perfect, and they they work right through when I need a carrier. But for a lot of people, I've found out that use it, it's like their early game carrier, and then they graduate to a Helios later on because it's they you know, play on a totally different scale than I do. I'm yeah. a pretty small, minimalist kind of player. And so this was a two-bay starter carrier, like a Core 4, I think, carrier. And it can take two Astra modules. Um, and then the big one is the main Astra. And the Astra, this thing, actually started as the Valeru, which is in the background there. Um, and that was a carrier I made that uses scripts Majora modules. And so when I adapted to the new module scale, I updated and upgraded and modified the Valero, and that's what became the Astra. So new engine pods, modified interior. Obviously, I had to stretch it to fit the bigger modules on it, all that kind of stuff. But um, I really enjoy the modular building. Um, it's kind of fun because you get to dream up all the different ways you could use a module. And they're not that hard to build. I can crank them out pretty quick. And so after you've done your core cargo farm production modules, and you have to start thinking, OK, what else can I put into these things? And so you have your harvest module. And I made a starter module like the Janus. Um, but in the Astra scale, there's a auto miner module that's designed to park on top of an auto miner to tend your auto miners. And then I uh, made a drop module as well that's high G thrust, so you can take it down to like a high gravity planet and do work on high grav planets. Yeah. But I really enjoy that because it's just, it's kind of a fun little side project doing each of those little modular builds. And so I think of the Astra as being kind of like like I said, it's kind of a midway point, but it's also very much inspired by both of those. It's it's closer to a Mojura in scale, but the styling on the module, I tried to kind of take inspiration from um, Jay's P module for his Helios. I really like the look of that one. Um, really clean lines on it and, and some slight angular bits to it. And so when I made my modules, I tried to give them, there they are boxes basically, but. I tried to give it a little bit of, you know, the cutouts on the sides and the angles and stuff. And my focus was um, power management. So like my farm module, you can run, well, the current farm module, you can run the farm and have um, a food processor running without burning fuel. Um, I don't think that's the case with this one, but with the new production module, you can run a deconstructor or a constructor or some small constructors without burning fuel. So that was the whole point was the carrier can sit with without burning fuel. I wanted the modules to be able to function without burning fuel because um, that was the whole focus of, the, of having them in, in a separate module. I like the set-ins here for the solar. They look really good. Thanks. Yeah, when I first made the Valeru, that was with the original CB solar. And so every time you parked, you had to pick up all of those solar panels and then reinstall them oh. to, up, to, up, to update the calculation. So that was always fun. That was just part of the... When you moved to a new system and you wanted to park, you had to... Pick yeah. up all your solar, put it back down, and yeah. Oh, that's awful. Just like now when you have to park, you have to take all the fuel out of your tank and <laughs> do a bunch of stuff. Just part of playing the game. 
it's crazy the things we live with, right? We tolerate. Yep. Absolutely. And yeah, this this had more of a pirate kind of style. I felt like the Mojura because it was tan. It kind of was more of a pirate type ship. Um, so that's kind of why I was going with the pirate theme here. Um, and then this door goes to module bay where you would have your um, oh what is that thing called the drop module. So I made a Mojura module that you could undock and lower down, and then when the top is level with the bottom of that door, you drive your HV out of the door and park it on top of the module. Then you could take the module out like a drop pod. So you'd have your tank on top, and there was a ramp at the back to get on and off. Oh, that's cool. And yeah, it was kind of a fun challenge because the Mojuras are so small, there's no way you're going to fit a hangar in one. And so I figured I could take a big tank out by docking it to the ceiling instead. Yeah. But you can see elements that carried through from this to the Astra. I kept a lot of the original ship. I just modified it where I needed to. A little bit of asymmetry going on. I like it. Yep. Yeah, where I can think to use it, I like to use asymmetry in my stuff. Quick strike. Yeah, that was taking the Claymore and adding a uh, landing pad runway thing off to one side to kind of turn it into a carrier. Um, it was kind of fun. I had seen somebody else in the workshop had a ship where they had a hangar door in the carrier deck, and so I wanted to kind of do my own take on that. Um, that's what started it. And then I had been using the Claymore, and I liked the style of it, and so I wanted to carry that style over. And I thought, well, why not just see if I can turn the Claymore into something? So that's how it started. Kind of a battle carrier. Yeah, very early build as well. But it's got the ramp out there so that with the gravity on in space, you could drive out onto the deck. Oh, I like it. If you hovered enough, you know, you could get up above that. Yeah. It worked, it worked pretty well. Um, I found out later that if you just turn the gravity generator off, you can fly in an HV in space. So it <laughs> kind of made that pointless. But at the time, I didn't know that. So live and learn. Uh, That's a lot of my design and build history is, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Won't do that again. So you just kind of figure it out as you go. <laughs> I like it, man. Thanks. And this is another thing that I try to do on all my carriers or battleships or whatever that are ones I'm going to live in. I like having a captain's quarters that's kind of nice. Um, totally not something that has any functional value or whatever, but I just think it's neat to have a place to go to like log off in. So I like having a kind of a cool room where I can be like, yeah, this is my, this is my place. Very nice. Nice little overview of the warp drive, too. Makes for good scenery. <laughs> yeah. After I learned about the J. Randall texturing, making the clean lines, I just I can't look at these old builds the same because they have all those ugly cross lines on them. <laughs> it's like triggering me. Templar is one of your latest builds here. Yeah, that's a newer one. That was for the... Um, I don't even remember what the challenge was, but it was for a designer's challenge. It's a starter CV. I Seriously, I'm trying to think what the challenge was. I can't even remember. Hmm. I know it's upgradable. Maybe that's what it was. Upgradable starters or something? I don't remember. See here. Uh, or two. Yeah, I know it's a starter vessel. I just don't remember what the challenge was. But anyway, yeah, that, it was a starter that's. There's a switch right there in the hangar. If you flip it, it shows through LCDs where all the upgrades are, upgrade slots are. Um, 
I think you have to turn the shield off on this one to be able to have it sit without burning fuel. Um, but it does feature some solar. Room to add a, a, gar a little farm, garden. But like over there, so you remove those blocks and then you can put the CPU right there yeah. to upgrade it. And then there was, there's spots in the back to throw bigger thrusters in and all that kind of stuff. Missing the, this is our way to the bridge. It's just outside. Engineer. Generator room. Okay. There's uh, a ladder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you might have guessed. Yeah, that's. <laughs> it's uh it takes some getting used to. You know, I'm, I'm looking for stairs or elevator. <laughs> Very nice panorama here. I like that. Yeah, I like when I can. I like to have a good first-person bridge. It's nice. I used to only fly ships in first person, but I've kind of moved away from that. But yeah, it was a fun little little quick build. Again, using the structural ramps. That was my starter this season on the server. She's a beauty. It's a very good starter. Thank you. See, what are we getting in with here? We got 2,800 Neo. A little bit of rest from Zesco's in. That's probably the repair bay or the repair station. I think those are for one of the shield boosters. Oh, okay. I have a single small capacitor on there, I think is what that's from. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I, that was my starter. Um, I went through and upgraded it added the uh all the upgrades to it and it, it was pretty good ship while i used it port nowhere <laughs> yeah that was an interesting one that was a long build um i wanted a space station that i could take with me and so my thought was that I could make something that was crazy oversized if I only used the minimal thrusters in all directions except for the back. So it's core nine at spawn, but it has six drive thrusters and room to add more. Wow. It's basically a station, a space station. The other thing about this that I was playing with is that orbital ring actually has orbital gravity. So when you walk through the interior you'll notice that the it's aligned oh to the gravity plane sweet. so when you walk it and you walk through those arches that connect the pods you actually will adjust your player will adjust as you walk through here so your camera automatically so it took some experimenting to find the distances and stuff and where to make the transitions but you walk through and each pod has its own little theme and it's kind of like a space station that you can move around. <laughs> I love it. Now, I've seen that on a couple builds, but um, some of them maybe just for PO. Well, I don't know. Is it, I'm trying to think if there's been any that have been POIs. I thought about doing a POI version of this. This might make kind of a neat pirate station. Um, originally, the ring was a solid ring, but that's a lot of window panes and it pushed the size class over the spawn limit for the server at the time. And so I had to cut out the rings and turn it into two separate sections Yeah. Um, to get in the size class limits. And then that was sort of like a heat shield. That was the idea because you're always going to be pointed at the sun when you park um, or at least back, back when I built it, um, you had to be so. Um, and I figured if it didn't need to turn like a race car because you're not going to take it to planets and it's only going to be left at the sun. And so it didn't need to be super agile or maneuverable because it was really just for warping and then being parked. Um, kind of a cool alternative to carriers. Yeah, it, it has a landing pad at the back where you could stick a, a CV or something. But it, the idea was, yeah, more of like a mobile space station. Right storage 
all that sort of thing. Right. And then I loved the gravity thing. That was just kind of fun. So like this drum in the next bit is where the ends of the gravity fields are. So when you're actually in the game, you can walk on the surface of this all the way around. Oh, that's and sweet. It'll, <laughs> it'll adjust. So that's why there's like plants on the wall here. Yeah. Because when it's when the gravity is all turned on, it's actually not the wall; it's the floor. So, kind of a new take on the whole whole thing there. And then you got a good sized hangar in the back for all your little ships. Pretty cool device mounting. Nice little pipes feeding in there. Yeah, yeah, I like the occasional piping, occasional bit of piping. I like railings. This is before my ladder phase, so there's still elevators. <laughs> and then I also wanted it to have its own functionality too. So when I was first starting this build, it was before they changed CV Solar, and you used to be able to get a lot more power out of a CV Solar panel. Yeah. Um, and so you could originally do production and everything. And I, when I changed it to the new CV Solar, um, it couldn't give you enough power for that. It can still sit without burning fuel. And you have there's a like a 96 grow plot farm on board that you can still farm food without burning fuel, which is nice. Um, I don't know if this is the newest version or not, but there's a version of this I made where you can actually dock 10 different modules to it. Oh wow! Um, right. And use it with the uh, the astro modules because I made a series of astro modules. Yeah, so you have two there, and then the ring. Each pod on the ring has a dock on either side. Yeah, so there's the little plus sign is where you'd line your cursor up, and then there's a door where you can actually get to the modules. Um, But yeah, it allowed you, if you wanted to, you could have a module on each side of each pod, plus the two under the hangar. Wow. Yeah, I used it one season and had, I, I think I only put like four modules on it or something, so I, I just didn't need that many. Yeah. Um, but that was kind of nice, because having those extra modules allowed you, you, you to have the power-free production or whatever else you needed. Love and then a, a double-sided landing pad there so you can dock something to the bottom or to the top. But yeah, it was kind of an odd build. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit unique, but got a good use out of it. Awesome. I love it. Very good uh, touches with the sections there, you know, telling stories. I uh, like the angled solar panels. That's cool. A little framework on the back grabbing it. Asymmetry elements, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fun build for sure. Icarus. This is another one that uses modules. Um, the idea here was to have a starter CV that had a bunch of solar on it so you could do you know, stuff for free and it could work as your starter CV by itself, but that could be upgraded into a station. So you can dock a, a Astro module or the pirate version, because I made a bunch of pirate modules as well. Um, you can dock one to each side, the front and back. And then with those two modules, you could have farm in one and production in the other, and now you've got a little mini space station. Um, or at least that's the idea. And you could, because it's a CV, you could still move it around. It has a warp drive and all that. So yeah, it's kind of a fun little build. Um, just to see what, again, experimenting with modules to see what else I could come up with to, to do with them. And a little landing pad up top for your SV of choice. Or I think you could get like a smaller CV in there as well. Yeah, yeah, possibly. But yeah, so the 
starter that turns into a space station. <laughs> old big boy right here odin skip yeah so like i said i like to repurpose stuff this is a build that started as a freighter that i made so that part you're looking at now would have been turned 90 degrees um with the original freighter version um and i'd made a version of that that's actually the syndicate munitions freighter in reforged eden oh wow um so it's still in there as its freighter version. I turned it 90 degrees and came up with this, wanting to take some of the elements from Port Nowhere and have it in a smaller scale in a ship I could actually take out to different systems and use more as a ship. Um, so that's where this came from. And you can actually dock modules to this long section. There's a few spots to, to park a module, actually. Um, that's what those little arms are for down there. That's what these spots are for, so you can get to the actual door on the modules. I forget how many you can dock to it. It's like six or four or something. Um, it was a lot of fun to make. Uh, again, repurposing this. And actually, I repurposed this one more time further. I turned it 90 degrees again so that it stands vertical and turned it into a space station. <laughs> so I, ha I have a space station version of this as well. That's cool. Yeah, so I've gotten a lot of use out of this model in various forms. Again, solar panels for the landing pad because I didn't know where else to hide them. It's only size class eight for real. Yeah, it's it's really not too bad. Wow. I mean, I, w I wanted something that would be small enough that I could actually go out and use it, go to travel to the systems and stuff. And I want to say it's made out of like hardened steel or combat steel or something it's it's a heavier duty i know the original ship was made out of combat steel looks like hardened steel i downgraded it once um just to save weight because the original ship started actually so i made a combat csv that i was using to fight cvs and i wanted um my idea was that if I could get close to a CV, a big CV, and didn't have to close the gap, that I could hop out of a hangar and then attack it from point blank with the SV. Yeah. And so the original version of this was just a combat steel ship that I would power off and turn off my inertia and let the ship drift into the CV I was attacking. <laughs> and then when it hit, I would just pop out of the hangar and shoot. So <laughs> it, was, it worked well the couple of times I tried it, but it was kind of a, an odd way to go. Yeah. But I always like trying new things, you know. You never know. Find something fun sometimes. Interesting little sandwich between his uh, landing pads. Pretty cool. So let's look at this guy here. Yeah, one of the few bases that i've actually made um the astrius station um i converted it to a there's a pirate version of it that's all beat up pirate style and then i also made a version of it that is a poi on anvil server if you go to the anvil system this is the anvil space station wait um, a minute is it um, obviously this is different. So this is another one where I played with gravity. Ah. So when you get partway through the gravity rotates 90 degrees and there's a hallway somewhere around the core off to the sides, maybe. Um, yeah, from this room. If, yeah. So if you go down those stairs, um, in the distance there, you'll see that, uh, the rotation angle will change. So as you walk down these, these planks, it turns and the gravity rotates you as you're making that transition. And then this becomes straight with the world, if that makes sense. So yeah. it's just, it's about, you know, that rotational placement of where the gravity generators are. Um, but I found out that you cannot have NPC traders spawning on rotated gravity. They'll still spawn oriented to the play field. And so I had to change the entire lower section of this for the one that is on the server. Um, used as a POI because it's a trade station and so I needed to have traders down there so 
had to go through some modifications. And this is also designed to work with the Astro modules. Um, you can dock eight of them to the outside of the ring. So each one of those spots. So there's the four that are flat, and then there's four that are on the angle as well. Oh, that's pretty slick. Yeah, so it actually looks kind of, I think it looks cooler when it's got all the modules docked, docked to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a neat little station. Um, like I said, I don't build many bases, so it's pretty rare that I, I make one, but I was pretty pleased with how this one came out. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about the structural integrity with space bases, correct? I... Yep, and that's why this is a space base. <laughs> <laughs> You can do so many cooler things when you don't have structural integrity. Yeah. Um, and so, and I wanted to do something neat, so that was my. I like that. That's pretty slick. Yeah, a little cafeteria area. That's that's one cool thing about a base, you know, because it's not having to move, and you don't have to worry about the mass. So you can have extra rooms that are just there for fluff, just for fun. And so that was, I kind of had some fun here making like a little lounge area and the penthouse up top and like all the different rooms. Um, none of it is, you know, meaningful. This one's kind of cool though. So there's a switch over there on the left that if you flip it, it actually tints the window. What? Wait a minute. It's kind of, you have to be in God mode to actually see the transition. You have to phase into the wall to flip, flip, flip the switch while you look at the window. But. Oh, wow. It tents the window. And what that is, is a bunch of really large LCDs that I very, very painstakingly had the shapes match. If you look close, you can see a seam right yeah, there. I, yeah, I did. But that's you don't really see that head on. And like, it's, it's just a colored black square, or a couple of them put together, that kind of make it look tented. Because the idea originally was to park it. This station started as a CV. Um, so this was before I made Port Nowhere, I made this. And the idea was that it would be a CV, it would spawn with thrusters to just strapped to the outside. You would warp to a star, because on servers you can't build, or anywhere, you can't build at stars. And I wanted a station at a star, so I would spawn this, warp it to a star, remove all the thrusters, and it would look like a base. And because it was going to be at a star, pointed at a sun, I wanted to be able to tent my window. And so I, I came up with the LCD window tent. That's I've never seen anything like that. So pretty, honestly, you don't clever. really need it. Yeah. But that's I, because of that specific, you know, reasoning for building it. That's I wanted to make sure I could tent my window. <laughs> that's cool. And I've used these a couple of different times on the on the server. And I've used these too, my little CV drop bases. These were kind of fun little weekend builds. Little farm module, and there's a starter base module. Um, I made a production one, a defensive one. The idea was that you could, well, the, the original idea was that you could spawn them in without a base attack. Right. But then he added for million added base attacks to spawning CVs for a time, right around the time I made these. <laughs> so it's like, well, okay, that doesn't work, but you can still make yourself a little settlement out of them because you can spawn a bunch of them and they sit on the terrain and there's no structural integrity, which is again, a pet peeve of mine. So it's a little modular settlement thing. Each one can kind of take care of itself. It's got its own enough solar to kind of sit there, which is again, another, one of my quirks, I always like having bases that I can leave without having, you know, to worry about fueling them if I end up being gone for a week or something. Yeah. Very livable. I like the shaping of it. Nice, uh, nice texture work to the lights around the windows. It's pretty cool. Thanks. Yeah, and it's just supposed to be like a cheap little drop thing that you could pop the core on and abandon if you had to later on, but obviously not shielded or protected or anything because it's got the exposed generator on the side and all that, but I like those generator blocks. I think they look cool, and so when I have the opportunity, I like to be able to look at them.
Take a look at this big boy. Oh man, yeah, the Valhalla. <laughs> that is a month of my life I will never get back. <laughs> that was that was a project. That that's got to be the biggest ship I've made. Yeah. And it it took a long time. Presuming you've used this on a playthrough. Uh, I have. I used this on. I don't remember. If, I think it was season five. This was my end game ship. Um, I spawned it in. I did very little with it. Um, it takes, I think it takes 10 ox cores plus four hamster cores. Yeah. Or like six quantums or something. So like not practical if you're playing regular RE with block limits on. Like don't even bother spawning this in because <laughs> you won't be able to do anything with it. But um, on Anvil, it just barely works because we have hamster cores. And on um, regular RE, if you play without block limits, you know, you have unlimited numbers of quantums you can use, so you can make use of it there as well. Um, but yeah, it's just a huge, heavy ship. I think it weighs like 46 kilotons or something. Yeah, it's 42. It's mostly hardened steel exterior hull, um, which is part of the weight issue. Um, and then like the winglets and anywhere I could get away with it, I made it out of carbon to save weight. So it's got parts of it that are just for looks. But yeah, it was kind of a fun project seeing if I could recreate one of the cooler looking, in my opinion, one of the cooler looking ships from Halo. Um, I love the little Paris frigate. It's just such a unique shape. It basically is a ship that just looks like a gun. I mean, really. <laughs> And it was the first time I'd ever messed with the LX2 railgun. Um, I figured it, it, in Halo that's a big thing. Like all their ships are built around railguns, and so I had to have a, the, I had to have the railgun in the ship. So yeah. Yeah, that's, fortunately the lighting has changed. You know, we talked about this earlier, but having to go back and change the settings for the spotlights and such really aggravating yeah and this one was done before the lighting change so and i haven't had a chance to update it. i probably will though because i i spent so much time on this ship like this won't be one that i just ignore or abandon like i'll need to come back and update it Had to have a big hangar room for all the pelicans and <laughs> scorpion tanks and all the different little halo things I've made. Ah, look at this. Nice little winding staircase there. Pretty slick. Big old shit, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yep, it is not small, and like again, a, a lot of it is it's so big that it has rooms like this that are just just there to add to the RP of it. A little barracks area, and then you go up into the galley area, and that's just technical access, I think. Yeah, thruster access, and I think there's some solar panels in there or something. Yeah. And actually, I believe this ship can be face tanked. It can be used as a face tank to a certain degree, which is part of it, too. That's why the blast doors are in there. I'd have to think so. So some, some many blocks up front. Have to and I've heard of different people using this ship that have said, you know, oh, yeah, I've used this in in-game, and I threw it with all these cores and did all these things. And it's like, that's awesome. It's always cool to hear that, that people are using it, so... Because when I when I brought it in, I barely used it as like a battle carrier. I didn't. I I was hopping to different systems and stuff with it, and parking it, and then using all the little ships. I didn't do a ton of big fighting with it. But yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Definitely a long build process, but a worthwhile one. 
I discovered that the cockpit on this one is so high above the uh, railgun and the railgun because it's set in the space between the two nose pieces you actually can't fire the railgun from the top cockpit. <laughs> and so I had to add a cockpit that's down here that's right above where the railgun goes, which is those spots with the blocks. So this is the actual railgun cockpit. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you, you have to fire it from here because it won't work from the other cockpits. So I think it actually has three bridges total. And then a farm, because why not? <laughs> I had space I needed to fill. Mission briefing. Missing pilot in enemy territory of the ST Force Recon. Secure crash site. Evac crew to LZ area. Nice little touch of flare. Again, me secretly wanting to do a drop pod mission <laughs> on the server and event. <laughs> Keep coming back to it in these builds that have the drop pod base. Little engineering section in here. Did you do this LCD? Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, a little UNSC. And I did a Cortana as well up in the bridge area, um, like a hologram looking LCD. Um, that was kind of cool too. It's the next floor down from this. Ah, okay. Yeah, so you get a little bit of Cortana there too from, I figure she's pretty central to the Halo games. <laughs> that is cool. Did we miss a CV? Man, look at these. Mako Skiff. Is this like, uh, yeah. is, it, is this, a, yeah, well, this has to be a starter, right? Yep, yep, starter. This was one I was trying to see how small I could make a starter, and it's a core only starter. Um, it almost will fly around without burning fuel. Um, I think occasionally certain maneuvers and stuff will cause it to burn fuel, but it's pretty power efficient. Um, not super expensive. I have used this one before on the server. And okay, so normally, you know, I, I do the cheat thing and I use the, the um, what do you call them? The blast doors to hold chips up when I have cool looking weird shapes like this one. Yeah. This one, I did not do that. There is no, there are no blast doors on this ship. It lands on that single point uh, because it's balanced. Really? Yeah. So this is when I uh, building this is when I discovered just how heavy generators are. Because I tried having them in those pods originally, and it put so much weight forward that it would tip over every time. And so I had to move the generators back and kind of re redesign the thing a bit. But fortunately, everything back here is so heavy. And the foot sits just far enough ahead, especially with that ramp to get in it, that it is actually just, it just balances on that one point, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and just wanted something, just thought it looked kind of like a little salvage skiff kind of thing. That's why I put the claw there. Um, it is shielded. It doesn't have, it's just got little sentry turrets on it, but I really, I really like this build. This is one I've used a couple of times on the server. Wow. Yep. <laughs> it took a lot of <laughs> trial and error, but I got that one to balance without any funny <laughs> stuff. So all that framework out yeah, with yeah. the solar panels is all carbon and stuff to save weight. That's pretty so, cool. Wow. Yeah. I like it. Uh, let's see what kind of cargo we got in here. 130. It's got an odd number. 
So hopefully you're not <laughs> too bothered by that. <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's great, man. I like it. Thanks. Yeah, I, I that was a fun build. I like doing the little starter CVs. That's one of my favorite things to make is a starter CV. Agamemnon. We were talking about this earlier. Yeah, these three are part of that series. So I made the Agamemnon first, and then I made these other builds to kind of match it um, as part of a design series. Um, this was pretty early on. I made these right after I made the Claymore and the Quick Strike. So this is a little bit more progression in my skill as a builder, um, but still very much learning. Um, this was my first attempt at like an in-game kind of a ship that needed. I think it actually I don't know if it spawns at core nine or not. They've changed CPU. This was before they changed the CPU on turrets. Um, this is also before they made it so that you couldn't spawn something with the quantum cores already installed. So I think this one comes with quantums. Um, so a lot has changed in the game since yeah. this was made. Yeah, you got a leg um, shot in here. Yep. Yep. This was this was the end of season one when this came out, um, and a couple of us in my faction all brought them in. We're using them to fight Legacy and stuff back the old version of Legacy that wasn't so crazy. Um, had a lot of fun with it. Um, really enjoyed this one. I was pretty happy with how this one turned out, and it was it was a fun one to use on the server. Um, and then I built this one, the Sura, and I've built four different versions of the ship now. This one started as an SV. I have an SV that I built, and I loved it, but it was too expensive as an SV, and I thought this would be kind of cool as a CV. So that's why it looks kind of like a fighter, even though it's a CV. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of fun with this one over time with different weapon loadouts and stuff, using it for various things. Um, it's It's been a, a fun build. Um, kind of an unusual one because, like I say, it looks like it should be an SV, but it's a CV. Just a pure combat build, not a uh, not a multi-purpose ship, really. Yeah, kind of bare bones, uh, just efficient gun and run type thing. Yeah. But but it was it was pretty effective back when I was using it. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. Killed a lot of stuff with it. And then the other one, I don't honestly really remember a whole lot about. It was just another trying to make a Core 9 combat CV. I might have been trying to make a missile boat, missile-based. I see a lot of missile launchers on it. Yeah. Um, this is one where I would say that it, I was inspired a little bit by Halo, the Halo shapings and the nose with the antenna sticking out, that kind of stuff. Um, mint as, I think, a, a Core 9 kind of a combat vessel. But I wanted something that I could do um, a little bit more with than that other one we just saw, where it's just combat. This one has a hangar and it has some other things, so you can... You can do a little bit more with it. And it used to be Core 9, but again, the values for CPU on turrets were changed a while back, and so now it's slightly over. That's not too bad. Yeah. But I promise, it used to be Core 9. <laughs> I would say it's still Core 9, 95%. Yeah, that's true. He didn't change the values that much. So, yeah. Just another one trying to Kind of keep with that same style from the the Aggie Agamemnon. Little living quarters. I don't really remember. You really do like your check your board checkerboards, don't you? It's... Yeah, um, <laughs> they're handy, especially if you're trying to color uh, container extensions. Yeah. Because um, you're so limited on textures and stuff, and it's an easy way to keep from having just a flat color floor. But yeah, I, I used to use a lot of that stuff. And of course, also before the lighting changed, lighting model changed. 
Right. Because um, it is very dark in there now. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely switched from doing darker colors to painting with more like whites and lighter tones since that lighting change happened. Just so you can see. Nice little theme of gunship. And also, as you can see from the Suro, it's before I knew about Clear Pivot. <laughs> <laughs> they see the name is way below it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Clear Pivot is the thing. Look at this one. This one's way below. Wow. Yep. That's yeah. Definitely before Clear Pivot. <laughs> I try to do that on my stuff now, just for the texturing. Yeah. But. Yeah, lots of different things. Trident class PBC, kind of like a, uh, a take on a Camrat, huh? Yeah, inspired by the Camrat. is supposed to be a battle carrier type build. Um, I think it needs four quantum or four uh, ox cores to spawn it in. Yeah. Um, but I liked the idea. I, st I started shifting into this as my in-game type build, where you have a base, a mobile base that with the combat ability. So you have a, you have to have a good sized hangar. You can put all the combat stuff you want on it, but I want it I want to still have a hangar so I can carry my stuff with me. I can carry a miner and a combat SV. I can carry some little things. I want production of some kind. I want a bit of cargo. And so I've shifted into building more battle carrier type stuff. And this was the first one um, where I really started that trend. <laughs> So it's like a liveaboard ship. Some would say that's a no-no, building the battle carrier. Oh, yeah. No, it's definitely not the, the standard approach. But for the way I like to play, I, I sometimes only have a limited bit of time I can be on. And so I, if I'm in my ship and I see something, I don't want to have to run back and get a different ship and do all that. It's, it's kind of cool to be able to just park on a planet and be there not have to power off and be able to just go get in my SV if I want to, or right. Exactly. Hey, there's a, there's an OPV I want to fight. I can go do that. Like all in one. I don't have to be messing around with different stuff. It's just kind of nice. Yeah. It's a convenience thing. And this one is colored like the Astro line. It was originally going to have a module dock in the back. I ran out of space and decided to go with room to install a, um, big shield booster in there instead of making it work with a module. Um, later, I built that big Star Wars-y looking character, car carrier that can fit two modules in it. So that's kind of the, I wanted eventually, I wanted a battleship that could have modules on it. Um, but that's why this one looks like the rest of the Astro stuff, because it was originally going to be a modular thing. I just changed it. And I've used this at least two different seasons. I used two different versions of this. It's a pretty good ship. Cool slice of windows here like this. And I had to include those big spaces up top so that I would have room for um, extra generators. So you can put two more advanced generators on it oh, okay. for running stuff. Yeah. yeah. I had somebody that right. was using it ask me about that. They're like, hey, are you going to include something for generators? And so I just kind of, that was the only space I had left. <laughs> and look at this system. Holy cow. Got a little, nice little look over it, too. Got these pipes feeding into the shield extenders. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's pretty slick. Okay. How's that working? What? It's two block. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Okay. I do that occasionally. Yeah. I do that occasionally. Yeah. All right. Um, it was... gives me an excuse to use the, uh, you know, redheaded <laughs> stepchild of the cockpit blocks, the uh, the two block wide one. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one that no one uses. Very slick. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forget why I ended up doing that. It may have 
been because I was originally going to have that module dock in the back. And they normally the module docks for this are to that double door. I think that might have been why I started out this way. Yeah. Um, but I ended up using that space for a big shield generator or one of those big shield capacitors. So, yeah, I got some some good use out of this. This was a fun one. Um, and it really hooked me on the, the idea of, of using a battle carrier multi role kind of a build, which again, I know that's blasphemy in RE, <laughs> but it's just, I really prefer it if I can make it work. Yeah. Yeah, I like it, man. I, I dig the camera, so this is kind of a, a good natural feel for me. I like the shape of it. All right, here we go. SVs. Uh, I would say that I really like this uh, P38 Lightning inspired build. That's really, I think, one of my favorites. This thing right here. Awesome. Yeah. So I had a lot of fun making it, and it's actually not even block limit compatible anymore because they no longer allow you to have six of those. But um, and that was before it used to be the the square block launcher. So I, I made this a while ago. Um, yeah, I was really going for that P38 look, the double tail. I've always thought that was such a cool looking plane. Yeah. It does not fly the best <laughs> <laughs> when you go actually try to fly it. It's it's not the greatest, most maneuverable thing. It's mostly the roll. It doesn't have the greatest roll. And you kind of need agility to be a good bomber. So it's not... I've only used it once. Um, I have other bombers that I use instead that are a little more agile. Um, I've been using that Y-Wing this season. That's been my go-to bomber. Um, got some nice yaw. Okay, it's not as bad as I remember. I remember it being just horrible, so I guess that's that's good. It's not quite as bad as I remember. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was the idea. It was you know just making a, a P thirty eight in Imperion. Um. I forget what designer's challenge it was going to be for. It was my original entry, and then I removed it, and I used something else instead. But, um. I didn't spawn that. I didn't spawn that one. Yeah, that was a. Oh, and the ghost. I see you got the ghost there. Is that mine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. I love hate that ship. <laughs> All right. No, that's bone ducks. Yeah, yeah. What I meant to get. I was really happy with this one. I I was really happy with how that Y wing turned out. I think that's all of them. There's, oh, there's the drop pod. I didn't even spawn that in. Oh, yeah. The little guy. <laughs> and that's the one for the big Star Wars ship. So one person drop pod versus a three person drop pod. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. One way trip. Can't wait to see that mission. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> I'll keep pushing for it. Um, the ghost, that was my attempt. I've, I watched Rebels finally, and then Ahsoka and all that, and I love the ghost thing. It's such a cool little ship, and I wanted to try my best at recreating it. So I know it's not, like, to scale correctly or anything, but this was kind of my attempt at a ghost. Um, I really liked the interior work I did on it. I think it, it came out really well. Um, awesome, man. Like It's like a medical bay there, that one. Well, just yeah, or a table. Just a table, yeah. Yeah. And then that's the SV clone chamber that we can have on Anvil. So that's just there for function. Access to the shield. Little toilet back there. Pretty slick. I like that. Good cell. Um, I tried to kind of recreate the couch that they had with the table. Yeah, and checkerboard. I like this. Interior. And then, like, I think that... I think the actual ghost has four rooms and not two, but I couldn't fit four rooms in it, so I just did two. Um, oh, wow. Again, there's no ladders on SV, so <laughs> that was my ladder. <laughs> um, little hangar bay, you got your upgrade area. 
place for putting cores. It has, I think, two thirty-two k cargo holds. But the aggravating thing is those structural ramps. So, like, you can't create the ghost shape without them, but you can't texture them and you can't color them. And so it's really frustrating because the outside just looks wrong when you look at it because it's so clean. And in reality, the ghost is all – it's like the Millennium Falcon. There's lots of little detailed texturing to it. Yeah. And you just – you can't do that. So I don't – I'm I'm hoping that someday they'll add those and I can finish this and put it on the workshop. But for now, it's it's just gonna stay like this. That looks so cool, dude. I love this thing, man. <laughs> I like that. Back That's section. been my my go-to little trader SV thing. Whenever somebody trades with me on the server, I take this to the trade zone and yeah, I've used it for auto miner tending as well for like Promethium and stuff. It's, those 32k bays are big enough to take the ore from a few auto miners. Okay. Totally useless bay, but again, they have that on the ship, so I thought, yeah, let's put it on there. <laughs> really cool. Lots of buried, buried thrusters on this one, so yeah. this looks really you kind of have to though. do that on a Star Wars ship. Thank you. Yeah. I've I've come to embrace the buried thruster. I don't see a problem with it, <laughs> and it's the only way to go if you want to make a Star Wars ship. You just you got to find some way to hide those things, and sometimes you can't help but bury them. And thankfully now we can color the thruster plumes, so you can hide them a little better. Right. It used to be that we could get rid of them entirely, but uh, I guess they didn't want that. <sighs> I know. I don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. <laughs> so much better. Beauty. And then, yeah, the, the little Y-Wing, which uses a few of those structural ramps. Um, I might yet put this one on the workshop. I think I might need to do a little bit more detail work on it. But I've been, I was really happy with it. I've been using it on the server to bomb targets and stuff, taking out blade POIs and just having fun with it. You have to crouch to get in it, which is a little awkward. But it's the only way I could figure to get the, the cabin the way I wanted Little core nine bomber. So you have to crouch to get under the. Yeah, and then you can pop out. So it's a little awkward to get in and out of, but it allowed me to keep the profile without having any weird, like cutout stuff for the. Um, the entryway. Yeah. If the detector is an astromech. Yeah. And again, they the asymmetric detailing like you get on your your Star Wars stuff. But yeah, this made a lot of use of the new uh, rounded blocks right and stuff. There. Some of the new blocks we got, yeah. Works really good. A lot good of buried thrusters. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, yeah, no, I've, I've really enjoyed been enjoying it. It's it's been a fun build to play with. Yeah. It's it, it, it just ruins the theme if you know you don't bury the thrusters on some occasions. Yep. Right. And and again, you know, I I I thought originally that maybe that setting was there or that the theory behind that was for PvP, like because it's cheating to hide targets from people or whatever. But then I've looked all the PvP ships I've seen, all of the thrusters are buried. Right. <laughs> so I don't I don't know who that setting's for, but I've I've come to accept that I don't have to always have all my thrusters exposed. This one was based off of a ship I saw that I guess is from Warhammer. Okay, yeah. I saw this, kind of like some kind of helicoptery looking thing or jet plane looking thing, and I was like, "Oh, that's a really cool cockpit looking." And so I tried to recreate that, and it turned into this. Is that the Thunderbolt or Thunderhawk? I think it is. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. Not don't know my Warhammer stuff, but I will take your word <laughs> for it. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, and this was cool because I was able to fit a warp drive in there too, so it's kind of a nice little short range attack ship thing. I got slick use a camo right there. I really. Yeah, sometimes I like the little camo detail, but I've come to accept that I have to use it sparingly. <laughs> yeah. I used to use it way too much. I hardly see them on builds now. 
yeah, some of these military ones, it's kind of a neat little detail to add. And then, yeah, the couple of little halo ones, the pelican, the hornet, and the vulture, um, all replicas or inspiration of the actual thing. Maybe not like one for one replicas, but heavily inspired by their namesake ships. Yeah, good inspirations. This was my go to Core 9 POI Buster for a while. I really like this one. I did a lot of testing, battle testing on this one for materials testing of like the hull combat versus hardened versus steel versus like a patchwork of the three and this is what i came up with to try to balance thrust and weight versus strength and it's upgradable as well which is kind of nice the hornet's just a fun one just a fun build i don't know how practical it is but Make one of my favorite ships in halo so I, I had to at least try to recreate it yeah make for a nice little starter yeah and it is shielded at least so you could use it in a practical sense going up against some unshielded enemies pirate pirate pois or something and the pelican which I'm very happy with. It doesn't look quite like a Pelican, to be honest. Um, it looks a little different. But for a Core 9 ship, it's got the long-range radar. It's actually got quite a bit of lift thrust. And I've made a little cargo pod HV and a little Scorpion kind of tank that can both dock to it, so it can actually carry them around. Yeah. Um, and it, it works really well. I'm, I'm really happy with the performance on it. It's, it's kind of a cool little ship can carry six people the idea there was that with some of those big halo capital vessels you have up to six drop pods and so this would be the ship you'd go pick them up with because it's got six passenger seats yeah i'm not too i never really got into the halo universe and you know maybe played one or two games but uh, I know that Pelican was always an icon, so it's a really cool representation. I like the the block work you've done here with this glass up front. It's really good. Thank you. Yeah, I again, I I feel like I have a reputation now because I've made all the Halo stuff that I'm some big Halo guy. I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> I've only played a few of the games back when I was younger, like in high school and stuff. I got really, I loved Halo, Halo Two, like the original stuff. And so it's just learning about all the expanded. You know ships and all the different things and thinking oh those are cool and trying to recreate some of them so it, i promise i'm not a huge halo nerd i'm more <laughs> of a star wars nerd but cool. i do like their the ships and stuff is it i don't know maybe it's because i i just don't see too many halo builders so yeah know. and i mean i don't know if the people who like to play halo if that always translates to the type of person who would be big into empyrean as well so right. that's probably part of that yeah, the arse. <laughs> As named by Darkest Warrior. <laughs> yeah, we decided one season that we were going to make tanks, all of us in our faction. We were just going to each make a tank, and then we were going to go pick a planet and just wreck it. Some of the most fun I've ever had in this game was doing something totally pointless, <laughs> because <laughs> tanks are not the best tool for anything. But so much fun just running around wrecking stuff with with yeah. the tanks yeah a r s e <laughs> yes i it doesn't stand for anything at one point it did i think there wasn't the acronym meant something but or i made something up but that's all darkest <laughs> i couldn't i was like what do i name this thing and he's like it looks like this call it this <laughs> thanks bud <laughs> so it's stuck Pretty good weapon suite. Yeah, and this this was older. This is again, this is like a season two yeah. anvil, so pretty early. Um I'm surprised it's still compliant with everything. It's not up to date with shields and, and no. those changes, but 
And then this was an old, old designer's challenge build I did. We were supposed to make a mech build. And I didn't want to make a mech build. And so this was my, the closest I could come was a mechanized pre-cutter. <laughs> that kind of looks like a mech, I guess. It's really impractical. It doesn't work the best. I have used this in gameplay, though. I spawned it in on a rainforest planet one season and just left it there whenever I needed wood. I just came back and cut some trees with it. And it does kind of look like a contemporary tree harvester kind of a thing. Yeah, definitely futuristic. A good sell on it. Really industrial vibes. I like the, the legs. It's a damn shame we can't have walk a legs, though. That would be so cool. Yep. I, I would be all about a mech challenge if we could make moving legs. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just it's one of those things where you look at it and it just makes you long for something that's never going to happen. So. Yeah. Let's look at this player. Player made Val Run. Val Run or Val Rune? Uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm not picky. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's mostly just more barren because it's designed to be used. The the in or the uh, OPV version has a few extra like cluttering things to it, but that's the main difference. Yeah. Um, but I made this as a player ship originally, but I knew in the back of my mind the whole time I wanted to try and make it an OPV. So that's why it has maybe a bit more detailing than it might otherwise have had. Because I wanted it to be a, a pirate ship in the game. And again, made before we could use those as switches. <laughs> so that was the old workaround. You'd put a switch on the back of the actual console. Just going for that kind of asymmetric interior, hodgepodge, slap it together, because we're making it work kind of a look to it. Yeah. Which I really like. That's that's my, my favorite way to, to build and design. I love how the front of that came out with the, the little side rails. And then if you look in the middle, that's actually a walkway that some, you can walk on if you're in the interior. So you actually have to leave the atmosphere of the ship, walk through here outside to get to where the crew compartment is. And the crew compartment is in the expendable uh, nose tanking section in classic pirate faction. The uh, crew is expendable. <laughs> they go. Um, they go before the ship does. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Ship's cheaper than crew, or crew's cheaper than a ship. So, um, yeah, love it. It's always something I'll love to look forward to when uh, my playthrough is going for the Val room. Got to get that Pentax. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> my my learning mistake has proved beneficial to everyone. <laughs> think we got everything? I think so. Certainly got enough of them. Yeah. Uh, any last words? Uh, looking forward to RERG2. I'm hoping that it's not too restrictive. Um, I have a few, as you can see there, I have a few larger builds, not quite as big as like NT or some of the other guys, but still some bigger stuff. I'd like to still be able to use stuff of that size. Um, so I'm curious to see what it looks like with all of the ox cores and hamster cores and everything. Yeah. Um, see what the up, the up, up end potential is. Um, I would hate to have to, you know, not be able to, to do stuff of that scale. I have some ideas for new ships I want to build that are bigger that I'm having to put on hold while I wait to see if that's a possibility. Yeah. Um, and if it's not, if it looks like it's going to be tighter and that, you know, we can test it and we see that it's going to be tighter, I'm definitely going to be one of the people arguing and lobbying for that to be adjusted. Because um, I do like the idea that you can have bigger ships, but. I, I'm at least I'm trying to temper myself and waiting to see what it looks like when we have a survival mode we can test <laughs> before I get too worked up about it one way or the other. So it remains to be seen. 
I'm with you on that. Any words of wisdom to aspiring builders or maybe even server admins? Uh, for on the builder side, the way I learn most is looking at other people's stuff. Sometimes it's spawning a building and just looking at it. Maybe it's taking it apart block by block and seeing how it goes together, seeing how they got the different texturing effects. Because some textures do different things on different blocks. Um, and those little fine details are what make the difference on a build. So studying the builds of people you respect or people you ships you love, that's one of the best ways to learn. Also taking a ship and converting it into something else. Um, like I said, I started by taking the Polaris ships and converting them into pirate ships. That was how I first learned how to build. And so studying Vermilion's work and Solusticor's work really showed me a lot in how to be a builder of my own and make my own things. Um, as far as the admin, um, I don't really <laughs> know what to say. Um, <laughs> if you have a good community of people, then it's definitely worth it to invest the time in being an admin if, if they need help. Yeah. Um, cause you can, you can, if you can contribute, but, uh, my goal as an admin is always to try and help make stuff for the community. So try to enhance the community with my content that I'm trying to help make, um, and make sure that you keep the community as the focus, you know, um, that's why I always, when we do stuff like the blade collective, I want it to be a feature showcase of community builds or of builds from people in the community that maybe not everybody's seen um, rather than the builds of us as admins. So it's, uh, to me, if, if you want to be a community admin, just make sure you're making it all about the community, I guess is, would be my advice. Yeah, it makes sense. And then everybody and, should clear pivot their builds. <laughs> and please clear pivot your builds. Yes, I feel like Bob Barker with the spay and new year pets <laughs> thing at this point. It's like clear pivot your builds, please. Um, I, I still don't know if that's the cause of the issue, but just as good practice, I do know it, it does cause, there are problems we have confirmed that clear pivot issues can cause, especially with mining. Yeah. Um, so it's just a good habit to get in. And now it's just it's as simple as clicking a box when you go to save a build. So it's really not hard to do. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. This was, this was fun to kind of look back at all the different things. Yeah, definitely appreciate your time, sir. Um, this, is this is a great series. This is awesome. Thank you for having me, and this was a lot of fun. Thank you for being here. This has been Artist Behind the Art with Philbert Farmer. That's going to do it, folks. Until next time, Life Force out. Hey, folks, if you enjoy my content, please consider becoming a patron today. As a patron, you gain access to exclusive builds not featured on the workshop, early access builds, as well as participate in a number of things, including polls, feedback, comments, suggestions, ideas, or anything you'd like to submit to current and future builds. If any of this appeals to you, please consider becoming a patron today. Link in the pinned comment below. Thank you.